I guess I'll give a formal introduction here. Welcome to Backpacker Radio, presented by The Trek. I am your co-host, Zach Badger Davis, and sitting somewhere 15 miles to the east, southeast, I think, is... Yeah. Hi, I'm Juliana Chauncey, a.k.a. Chaunce. And sitting somewhere about, what, 250 miles to the east is... Elise Ott. Um, I am Backpack Radio's new intern. Hell yeah. Elise is... Hello. The, the reason the show does good things for the last few weeks is 100% attributable to Elise, who, uh, Elise, if you could give us the, the longer introduction. So what is your relationship with backpacking? And just, just start at day one of your life. At day one of my life. Okay, that's, I was born in St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, lived in the South for a couple of years for school and work. And then um, hiked the PCT uh, last year, and then after that, ended up moving to Denver uh, because I was like, "Why not live somewhere with mountains?" And work kind of took me there as well. So, I'm a writer. I work in advertising. Um, yeah, that's that's. I pretty much didn't backpack before the PCT last year, so um, that's kind of where my relationship with backpacking started. Go so. big or go home. And Elisa's got some yeah. phenomenal posts on the track. We'll include that in the show notes, which Elisa is responsible oh, cool. for. So you are in charge of making sure that <laughs> so your posts make it myself. into that. Yeah. So when he says we, he means you. Yep. <laughs> yeah. You are, the, great. you are the collective we now. Uh, cool. So we're going to. We move, got another face here. Yeah. We're going to move to the most important segment in the history of Backpacker Radio. Uh, Chance has been talking this up for quite some time. She wouldn't even tell me what it was because it was so good and she wanted me to hear it from the source for the first time. So. Uh, if our mystery guest could start off by introducing herself. Yeah, I don't know if you want to use your name or not. You can go anonymous. Yeah, you, you can, can make up a name. You could use your real name. Go trail um, Hi, my name is Casey. Um, and yeah, I think I'm going to tell you guys about the time my uh, entire high school thought I shit in a sink. <laughs> <laughs> I told you it's going to be good. <laughs> <laughs> what an introduction. <laughs> Do you need more information about me? Because I can tell you more. No, you, you can't leave us hanging. You got to dive right into this. All right, shit. I'm diving in. So basically, I was in 10th grade. Also, a couple of, couple of disclaimers here. First, I'm going to have to... I feel like I'm going to have to maybe change one name in this story, just in case to you know she's innocent. listening here. Um, but I also feel like anybody who... Uh, who uh, went to my high school would a hundred percent know that this was me. So, so what? So, na- so say the name of the high school and your class and what um, the person's name rhymes with. Well, fun fact: Casey went to high school with Darwin. So oh, so Darwin, Darwin, Darwin shit sink. The hiker, your friend, the hiker guy from your grade, from your school. Devin? We'll talk about it later. Yes, yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh yeah, <laughs> we weren't friends, but I hear he hikes. So anyway. <laughs> He may have been here. I don't know. Don't ask him. I hope he's not listening. Maybe he knows. I don't know. So anyway, so <laughs> great. Okay. So <laughs> um, I was in high school. I was in 10th grade. And this girl in my grade who I was friends with, her name was Grace Marinara, <laughs> a.k.a. Grace Just Like the Sauce. That was her name on Facebook. Um, she was having a party and basically her parents were moving from one house to another house. So she was having a party in the house that she hasn't yet moved into. Um, and she was the kind of person who like at the time we would just be like, Grace, we're inviting a hundred people over. And she was like, okay, you know what I mean? So um, she had a party in her like unfinished basement of this new house that she hasn't moved into for in 10th grade. We're getting really drunk. And um, I have to go to the bathroom at, at one point. So I grab my friend, Allie, and we go to the, the bathroom, which is upstairs of this party. And mind you, this is like a banger. Like there is 100 people minimum, people from a bunch of different high schools, whatever. We go to the bathroom and, you know, <laughs> one thing led to another and I was going number two. And I'm sitting there going number two, talking to my friend, drinking a beer. I just love that you're talking um, to your friend while shitting. First yeah, so off. your friend is on we're the inside like of the that. bathroom door. We're close. Oh, we're in the bathroom together. <laughs> She's like fixing her makeup, taking a shit, whatever. And um, 
So I got to like, you know, wipe and flush. All of a sudden, I realized the the flusher of the toilet is not working. And so what a sin it would be to be the girl who took a shit in the only toilet at the house at the party. I was a social suicide. Why would I be that girl, right? So I decided let's get rid of the shit, right? <laughs> like, let's get rid of the evidence here. And so it just so happens that in this bathroom, there was also a sauna, like an old school sauna where you take a big spoon and you, you take the spoon and you put it on the rocks and it creates steam, you know? So I see this spoon, this big ass spoon. And I'm like, this would be perfect to scoop my shit out of the toilet with. <laughs> now I just got to figure out where to put it. So um, I scoop this shit out of the toilet. And as a joke, I start chasing my friend Allie around the bathroom with it. She starts projectile vomiting <laughs> all over the bathroom <laughs> leaves the bathroom so now i'm stuck in the bathroom with throw up everywhere and a spoonful of shit <laughs> and i'm like i don't really know what to do here you know so i'm like trying to open the windows like there wasn't even like a bag in the garbage can i don't like i'm like looking in drawers i'm like shit i don't I, the, there's nowhere for me to put this shit and then I just like look to my left and I just see a sink and I'm like, okay, we are going to try to mouse this shit down the sink. So I'm sitting there with my spoonful of shit. I just like at this point I should have just left it in the toilet, but I was just drunk and like determined to get rid of the shit that's about to like ruin my life. So I go and I take this spoon of shit and I'm down here doing my thing in the sink. All of a sudden, knock, knock, knock on the bathroom door. Someone's got to pee. And I'm like, hoping it's like one of my very close friends. I'm like, who is it? <laughs> and it's this girl. I'm going to call her Schlinzy. <laughs> and Schlinzy. She's like, it's Schlinzy. And I'm like, I'm not close with this girl at this point. She was like, she was like a horse girl. She was like a, and <laughs> more power to them. Horse side riding is hard, but it really is. I went last summer. I was like sore for like two weeks and we were going slow. <laughs> but anyway, we're not close, but she's kind of like, not to say that I was cool in high school, but I was, and I, she wasn't really in my friend group. <laughs> and I was like, okay, let's just try to make friends with her. So I'm like, she, I'm like, open the door and I'm like, listen. She like looks in the bathroom. I'm like, listen, it's not what it looks like. Someone took his shit in the toilet and uh, we didn't want there to be shit in the only toilet at the party. So we tried to get rid of it. And now I'm just stuck with a spoonful of shit that isn't even mine. I don't know why I'm doing this, but like, you're never going to tell anybody about this, right? And she was like, yeah. Your, your secret safe with me. I'm like, okay, Schlinzy, like BFF, like, dee -dee -dee -dee, you know, like handshake, whatever, kiss on the cheek. We're soul sisters now. Um, and so whatever, I eventually just like, oh, I forgot to include the whole thing is that the whole reason the toilet wasn't flushing is because there was no plumbing on in this house. So there's no way for me to, fl to, to flush a turd down the sink if I can't flush it down the toilet, right? So there was no running water. So... <laughs> unbeknownst to me so this is where it became an issue um so now there's just a sink with shit there's a spoon there's still some in the toilet there's puke everywhere and i'm like <laughs> I, i'm just gonna chalk this one up and just pretend like this never happened so i go downstairs to the party i'm like hanging out literally like standing with a group i will never forget like the guys that i was standing with like older cool guys and you know we're getting drunk and flirting. I don't even think I was flirting. I was like a loser back then, but um, it's like wasn't cute, but it's fine. You can still flirt <laughs> if you're not cute. It's fine. Just a side note. Anyway, so I'm standing there with this group full of cool guys. And all of a sudden, my friend Joe comes like running down the stairs. And this is like a scene in a movie where like music cuts out. And Joe runs, Joe's like, hey, everybody, somebody took a shit in the sink. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, Schlinzy comes out of the woodwork, pointing across the room. She's like, it was Casey! And then everyone just like looks at me and was like, sing shit out! Sing shit out! Like literally, like, 
became the Chitter. So then I, I became Saint Chitter. Um, I was Saint Chitter for months. Um, people wrote about people bequeathed to Grace's sink in the yearbook. Um, it was like a, a tragedy. Um, definitely, like I was in a gym class that was all guys and one other girl who was a senior who never went to class. It was basically just me and all guys who literally tortured me. Um, they called me Saint Chitter for a, a really long time. So um, I, anyway, so it wasn't until, by the way, I've told this story like 900 times since this <laughs> happened. And it wasn't until last year that I finally openly admitted that I took a shit in the toilet. <laughs> I feel like, I'm not kidding, like eight years. I was like, no, I was just trying to save the party. And like <laughs> scoop the mystery shit out of the toilet. Um so I finally just owned up to my blatant lies and started telling the story for what it really was, me being a guilty shitter. But I guess the moral is everyone poops. So. <laughs> that is, and that is certainly one of the it. morals. Was it a big weight? Was it a big weight off your shoulders to come out with the truth? Everyone knew I was lying. Like, <laughs> why would you some random person shit? But I stuck to my guns. Um, it felt a little better. It feels good. <laughs> now I'm just like nervous. Now I'm just like, who's listening? Oh, there's okay. lots of people it's listening. I'm sure you. Have That's your trail actually, name. Yeah, I was going to say. Trail name is Sink Shitter. Yeah, the good news is your trail name is already that. established. <laughs> Man, on the trail, think about it. You guys shit in worse places than a sink, so. Not really, but. Right. Uh, <laughs> 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 we just shit in a hole in the grass. <laughs> At least you oh can conceal God. that, and that you're not around a hundred other of your peers, but. Uh, <laughs> Sean Cha- did not oversell that. That is the most ridiculous. The, the my favorite part of this was when you're tormenting your friend by chasing, chasing her around her the bathroom head. with a spoonful of shit, and she throws up as a defense mechanism. Yeah, I I vomit, which is like the cherry on top. And I also got to know if there wasn't plumbing, did it just stay for the rest of the night? Oh yeah, dude. Like there was. I didn't. Like I didn't. This is the same. This same night, though, the cops came and a bunch of people got poison ivy running out of the, like, out of the house into the woods and hiding from the cops. And so, like, a bunch of people like showed up to like sports practice the next day with like poison ivy. So, it, like, kind of outshined my shit story, but it didn't. Like, I was looking for anything to outshine the shit, you know. <laughs> Uh, well, holy shit, that is incredible. Uh, you'd be a natural out on the trail. You've already got the gift to tell a good poop story, and that's half of backpacking. I feel like I have more poop stories for another day, for a cloudy day. If you guys ever want to have me again, I feel like maybe I'm going to have to go under like a voice changer and a different name, but we'll see. I yeah. know you guys have a you. fan base. You- we'll start referring to you by Sink Shitter. We'll go by Sink your trail name. I know. I just need like a black shadow over my face. Yeah. I'm like, oh, voice changer. <laughs> this is sink shitter. Probably should have oh, also okay. mentioned that this is being recorded uh, visually and it says your full name on your video. So <laughs> I thought this was a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> do people watch video podcasts? I guess that's we'll, vlogging. We'll find out. Then... We don't usually do video, but. Uh, Yo, you, know. you are blacking out my face. I guess at this point, it's like, cat's out. Is the cat out of the bag? I'm like, what are my coworkers? I would say this shit. Oh. I would say this shit's out of the toilet. This is what comes up when people Google your name. <laughs> yeah, do like every oh, good job. You guys, do that or not? My full name's on here. No, it's not. It stops at your first three letters of your last oh, name. Perfect, incognito. Just like I like it. <laughs> Think shit up. Amazing. We'll yeah, see. yeah. I told that story when we were hanging out one night, and I was like, "You need to retell that for Zach." <laughs> it's it's a crowd pleaser, you know. Not other good ones. Well, I appreciate you sharing it. You I have a big audience story. right now. It's it's not live, so it'll go oh, right, right, right. sometime right. after this. Right but. now, your audience is three, but uh, if the laughter scales at the same degree, you'll be, you'll be famous in no time. It's fine. Everything's fine. Um, shout out to Juliana. Everyone should buy her book, Hiking from Home. <laughs> <laughs> give my give my girl the shout out she deserves. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Buy that book. You ain't got nothing else to do, suckers. Uh, are people still hiking with coronavirus? That should be your tagline. question. That should be your tagline. They're uh, trying to tell them they can't, um, but some people are still doing it. 
Wow. Interesting predicament, right? Because you're like, I guess if you're hiking with a group, you got to be six feet. But like, wonder who's really got Corona out on that trail. You know what I'm saying? Unless they're eating bats. bats <laughs> <on all events. laughs> I have a feeling Casey's going to be requested by many people for a future show. <laughs> Oh my god! I have yeah, we're gonna make you your own segment. Honestly, make me a segment. I'm just afraid of the haters. Like I wanted to tell funny stories to a greater audience, but then I'm like, what do my coworkers see? Then I have to change my name. Like, yeah. then there's haters. Then there's people trolling your comments. You know what I mean? I'm like, I don't want people trolling my shit. Don't give them my Instagram unless they like me. Then I'll tell them. <laughs> Episode two, you'll come back and tell me and stuff. <laughs> oh gosh. Anything else? How you guys doing? Everyone at home. <laughs> How are you doing? Doing good. Love Just about that. to hop into some questions. Thanks for coming, Case. Love you guys so much. Um, like send me this when it airs. I will. I'll send you a link. Don't you worry. Wait, so it is gonna be on video and audio. You yep. should have told me. Like I would have definitely done something else. Okay, yeah, I guess. You know? I guess it. because we didn't warn you, we need your legal consent on video. Do you consent to us releasing it? I mean, if I'm gonna screw up your whole thing and say no, you can't release my video. I'm not gonna screw you up. If you if you can. Black out my face somehow. <laughs> it would be preferred. <laughs> I'm not going to get mad. Strange times out here, you know. We'll see what we can do. Yeah, just let me know. It's fine. Everything's fine. I consent. My name is <laughs> say. Say Shitter, and I consent. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to run that through the Trex legal department, which is, <laughs> by, by the way, Elise, that's you. Oh, uh, I think that's probably legal. Okay. We're good. Like, good. I'm cool. fine. The legal apartment. Like, the trolls it. come to get me though. <laughs> I will say you're going to hear about it. It's overwhelmingly positive. Yep. For yeah. some, someone who works for like multiple companies, social media, like very good comments on backpacker radio versus oh, most. one day I was literally just bored. I don't even know where I was, but I feel like I was maybe like bored someone not bored i was intrigued <laughs> wanting to learn more about backpacker radio and one day i just went through the app store or the podcast store and i just read all of the comments and i literally was screenshotting them sending them to mckenzie being like juliana is a podcast sensation you really <laughs> downplay it dog dude you're doing great i love you guys i feel honored honestly <laughs> i feel honored don't, don't worry I i'm have happy a feeling, to be here yeah, i have a feeling Thanks, you'll be back dude. uh we do us a favor and go eat a bunch of taco bell so you can line up that next good story I love. I have Taco Bell stories. <laughs> like, I'm just saying, uh, no ta more. Taco Bell is usually the uh, prequel to a good shit story. So, oh my god, don't tempt me with a good time. You know what? I called Mackenzie the other day. Me and Juliana's other friend Mackenzie. I called her. I'm like, is Taco Bell safe right now? You know what I mean? Because Taco be like, Bell's never been safer. Really though? Because I'd be like, has Taco Bell ever been safe? But at the same time, yeah. it's like rhetorical. Like, I don't know. It's probably safe. Um, haven't gotten it yet, but you know, I've been thinking about it a lot. So <laughs> next time, Taco Bell, you meet Taco Bell Backpacker Radio. Bye, Juliana's book. Love you guys. <laughs> Bye, Grace. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> nice to meet you, Sink. Oh, so God. that was the story I told you about. She's got so many good stories. Yeah. I I instantly regret opening the show with that just because that's a very hard act to follow. It really is. Yeah. Well, now we've got them hooked in. Yeah. We're all downhill from there. Okay. So it started out normal. We got to meet our wonderful intern Elise. And then that happened. <laughs> uh, let's, I guess we'll make an attempt to resume a normalist show. So, uh, the format of today's show is uh, at least put a call out through <clears throat> our Instagram and Facebook asking you guys for your questions. She's collected them, sorted them out, chosen her favorites. And uh, it's also worth mentioning that uh, this was supposed to be a drunk Q&A. How, Chance, how many beverages deep are you? Um, one wine. One wine. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll round up to call that one. Chance, Chance has had yeah. to uh, MacGyver. She doesn't have a wine opener in her apartment, so she jabbed a screwdriver through the cork and just letting it drip out. True. Here, I'll, show, I'll give you the demo. I'll, I'll top up. Yeah. Uh, 
Uh, and that's yes. also a good, that's a good reminder that this is the first attempt that we're making at a video podcast, considering that we're not recording in person for at least a hot minute. Uh, it's just as easy to record the video, so let's let's roll with it. There's ball flap in the background. Ball flap episode oh, yeah. ball number flap flap. something. They're, they're mentioning your name. Episode number eight. Uh, oh, I just. Oh, yeah, Harper <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's called having a puppy. Speaking of which, get. Do you want to meet her? Yeah, get the little devil on screen. Oh yeah. Ooh. Oh. This is Harper. Harper. Oh, there's Harper's my... face belongs on a coin. She's so cute. She she needs it's to really be good. a form of currency. She's so nice. She just likes to nibble a lot, which is like, can we not? How old is she? Uh, eight and a half weeks. Eight and a half. Fresh yep, out she... the oven. Yeah. Okay. She loves biting cords and eating cigarettes that she finds on the ground. <laughs> uh-huh. We've pulled out a cigarette from your mouth. We've pulled out a chew bag of tobacco from your mouth. The apocalypse uh-huh. really is yeah. the perfect circumstance for raising a puppy. I know. I spend so much time with her. We go out every hour and she still pees in the house. Yeah. Uh, you said you're in an apartment. What floor? Two. Two. Those 2 a.m. wake-ups when it's 20 degrees outside, don't you love that? We get up at 1.30, 4, and about 6.30 yeah. in the middle of the night. Yeah, her to use the bathroom, and then she poops on the floor probably around 7.30 have you ever, without fail. Have you ever done any sort of dog or puppy training in the past? Mm, I played with my neighbor's dog once when I was young, and she was out, and she said that the dog couldn't go down the stairs so that if I wanted to put it on the top of the stairs to leave me alone, I could. And I taught it how to go downstairs. <laughs> and it was an older dog, so she was convinced that it wasn't possible. But You have a long history of breaking commands. She called my mom later that night, and she said, you'll never believe it. Yeah. Was the trick steak? The trick is almost always steak or bacon. I put a treat on every stair. Yeah, there you go. And she wanted them badly enough. Yeah. So That's how I got into hiking. Uh, okay, so that's that's the setup for today's show. An excellent poop story. We got to meet our new kick-ass intern, Elise. And hey. we're drinking. And that's the last part. So if this is somewhat yeah. incoherent, as it probably already is very obvious. I'm uh, about two White Claws deep. So Two, two White Claws. Chance is a wine. I'm on, my, I'm on my second drink. I'm a uh, stem boy. Stem ciders. Denver, Colorado. That's all it. right. Are you all ready for a question? Let's do it. Ready to shred. All right. Let's start off poop related. Um, if you're out of TP or baby wipes on trail, what are your top three butt wipe substitutes? Um, I have had to use a used up oatmeal wrapper one time <laughs> because I gave away the rest of my toilet paper because we were on our way in town and they needed it. And I said, it's okay. I don't need it. If you had to guess second- what percentage of the poop are you successfully able to scrape out with an oatmeal wrapper? Um, well, we were on our way into town, so we got there soon enough. But I think I got most of it. Sounds like 60% of poop to me. I don't know. <laughs> you don't really like want to look at it afterwards. You don't check. I always yeah, check. Especially the wrapper. Great, there's no way to fix it, so why would I look? You know? <laughs> Call it good and go. Um so I have never encountered the issue where I needed to shit on a day hike until I did. And I was obviously totally unprepared. I don't ever I I do now, especially for longer day hikes, but up until that point I never packed toilet paper. This was I was doing a thirteen or started very early in the morning. It was like twelve miles round trip, five thousand feet of elevation gain. Uh I got to the end of the destination, the furthest point from my car, and the urge struck very strong. Luckily, because we were at such a high I was at such a high elevation, there was still snow there. And that was when I learned that snow is actually the ultimate toilet paper. Uh, unlike an oatmeal wrapper, I would say we got 100% coverage with it. It felt great. And um, I don't think – I'm actually a little bit disappointed that I haven't been wiping with snow ever since. I'm I'm trying to campaign to my wife that we get a uh, ice machine in the bathroom because it's just, it's just too right. I yeah. heard snow is good. Snow I'm is with you on that snow. Yeah. You've done snow before, Elise? Sorry, you've used your your snow wiper. Um, if it's available, yeah. Yeah, 
but normally I'm a baby wipe person. Um, I am too. Love baby wipes. Yeah. That's all I. You're gonna pack out. it out regardless. Why not? Yeah. Um, in cool. in classic Harper uh, style, <laughs> she listened to our conversation and went and peed on the rug just now. So. Nice. I think we've got a nice little uh, snapshot of you cleaning it up. So, uh, can, we do, can we demand that Harper remains on your lap for the remainder of the episode? You can, but she likes to sleep. Right? Oh. She, she can sleep on your lap. Puppy. Come here, oh. puppy. They want to see you. They don't want to see me. They want to see you. She is goddamn adorable. Holy shit. Yeah. Fun. She likes to bite. She's trying to learn not to. Good We're luck. trying to teach her. Good luck. But thanks. Um, before we get to the next question, do you are there questions related to coronavirus? Because I feel like this is the subject that anyone's interested in right now. There are several. Um, one main one that I saw a few times. Um, and this is very Shannon Perry on Facebook asked, um, what would you both do if you were 400 to 700 miles into a through hike this year when all the hostel hotels and parks started closing along with strong urging from organizations like the ATC to get off trail? At what point would you say you just had to push on, um, because you have put so much time and effort in already. Um, and I guess what would you be doing right now if you were already 400, 700 miles in? Um, if it was me, I would get off. I would probably want to stay on it first. Like, even if like a hostel or two is closing, I'd probably still want to try. I think the second the ATC or the PCTA or the CDTC comes out and says it's time to get off trail is when I would start looking for a plane back home or a bus or a drive. It's, I think it's very easy, especially in the context of a through hike to, so I have two overarching thoughts about this. The first one I'm going to continue. It, it, I think it's very easy to be unaware of the severity of it. Like I remember during, especially during my first through hike, AT 2011 drink, um, I r arrived to town like the day after they had killed Osama bin Laden. And it was just kind of like an afterthought on the news at that point. And it was so surreal to come out and just like learn what was big news at the time. And it was kind of already stale and old. And like, you know, you're not in, you're not, plugged into the zeitgeist you don't you're not spending all day reading these twitter posts and articles and yada 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 i think it's very easy to be ignorant and i don't mean that in a demeaning way whatsoever but i think it's very easy to be ignorant to the potential severity of the <clears throat> current pandemic so i think when people say get off the trail and you're you're not totally sure what the reason is for like when someone just tells you to do something and you don't know the why it is there's a strong American spirit to be like, no, go fuck yourself. Like I am an mm -hmm. individual. I have my own independence. I can do what I want. Um, however, you know, the more research you do on this thing, the scarier it becomes. And there's still some question about how transmittable it is. Like, can you get it by just sitting on a shelter that someone else sat on that they had? It? I think, I think yes, because so I read an article. I agree with what you're saying first off, because like, the other thing is you're also trained to think that, like, anyone who's saying negative stuff on Facebook is fear-mongering. Right. You learn yeah. that on the PCT. So you start to see this stuff and you think people are fear-mongering. Me and Zach talked about it on an episode when my mom messaged me and told me to get a few inhalers. And I was like, that's literally ridiculous. Like, I do not need to get a few inhalers. In retrospect, I probably should have gotten a few inhalers. Um, but, like, I just, like, was like, oh, it's so far removed from what I'm doing. I don't need to do that. And it's totally understandable for people on trail to think that. It's just, in my mind, it's like if the PCTA came out with a fire closure, I'm not walking through the fire closure because they're telling me I can't go that way. You know, they have that two miles closed for the endangered frog species. I didn't walk it because they told me I couldn't go that way. So it's, you know, it's understandable being removed from the news and just thinking things are slowly closing around you because that's what's happening in the real world. But I feel like when the trail organization starts to tell you we'd like you to get off is when it stops being something that's fear mongering or just an internet thing. And it's now just, you know, the trail is not accessible right now. It's not, you know, it's not good to be using. Yeah. I, I think there's two key differences in this scenario that you brought up. One is when there's a fire closure, that question of why is answered very clearly. Like you mm -hmm. don't, you don't want to go into an area that is either on fire 
or you know the like the the frog closure that has existed on the PCT for a long time. At least there's a a good explanation for what is happening. A, a pandemic is not something that I think is it, it's never happened in our lifetime. It's that's a difficult thought to comprehend. The last pandemic that has been big news. <coughs> in at least American history was a hundred years ago. None of, mm-hmm. no through hikers were alive at that point. Um, the, the other thing that I think a lot of through hikers are struggling with is the the amount of sacrifice that a lot of people put into a through hike. Like everyone that's going into a through hike is putting a tremendous amount of sacrifice, right? They're selling stuff. They're getting out of mm-hmm. leases. They're quitting jobs, whatever it might be. Some people are taking it to a next level. And from the standpoint of they don't have anything to go back to, like, when the ATC is telling them to go home, they don't know what home is. Like some of these people don't have family to go back to. They don't have apartments that are being subleased. They don't have homes that they're renting out through. They don't have, they don't have that home base to go back to. Not to mention the people that are hiking internationally, right? Like they, Mm -hmm. they logistically, I don't even know if they, I don't think they can get back home right now. So for I know for a lot of people, <clears throat> it's a lot more difficult than just an overarching organization saying this is the thing that you should be doing because th- there's a lot there's a lot more nuance that goes into it than that. Um, that being said, you know there's obviously a lot of people that are that are rebelling. They're they're they understand outright what is happening and they've they've decided that in their head they rationalize it. They're not touching common surfaces. You know they're staying six feet away from people whatever way they're dealing with the resupply in town. Um, I think there's people that are rationalizing it that way. You know, anytime you get a significant number of people doing anything, you're just going to get a certain percentage of people who have a varying thought on things. And I, that there's no difference here. Overall, I am very impressed and proud of the through hiking community because like I said, the amount of sacrifice that goes into a through hike to give that up just because, for the for the common good to do your civic duty of not wanting to spread a virus especially a lot of through hikers are young they're at a lower risk rate although we're learning now that that is higher than what was once thought um it is a very selfless act and i just want to say overall i'm generally very proud of the through hiking community and the way they've responded to this yeah it has been nice to see like the amount of people that are willing to you know give up whatever miles they've done and say okay I'll do this because it's the right thing to do and I mean it's hard to it's hard to think about it that way like if you are in your early 20s you're doing a through hike for example you don't have any underlying health conditions you know if you get this it'll maybe just be like one or two zeros and then you're good to go again is you know how it could be looked at by certain people but it is hard like how Zach said like it's it's hard to tell how exactly it spreads I read an article that said Someone got it on a bus and the person that they contracted it from who had it on that bus had gotten off the bus a half hour before this other person who got it got on. So, you know, that throws wrenches into how it spreads. But then the other thing, like, I think I look at it from a unique angle because I have such bad asthma, because I have chronic shortness of breath, because I have chronic cough. You know, I even now I, ha- I don't leave my house. I have, this is day 14 of my quarantine And there are still things that I have to think about, you know, in terms of Jonah, for example, wanted to come over and he's been home for like 14 days as well. And so it should be good to go. But he lives with his housemate and his housemate's friends wanted to do like a board game night the other night. And, you know, that's a group of people together. And it's like his housemate's friends don't know me. But if he goes, if his housemate goes to that board game night, then comes back home, then whatever he could have gotten from that board game night goes over to Jonah. And then if Jonah comes over, that could go to me. And so these people who are going to play board games who have no idea I exist could potentially spread to me with no knowledge of it on their own. And that's what's so scary about it is that, you know, it makes sense to want to just get together with your friends and play a board game or two, just like it makes sense to continue hiking if you're not around people. But there's a web of ways that it could spread that you don't see. And that's the hard part to get across. Yeah. You seem kind of psycho saying it, you know, like I feel crazy telling someone, Hey, like if your housemate went to hang out with someone, I can't see you, you know, for sure. That seems nuts. I mean, it's like I said, it's so unprecedented in our history. Again, there's the closest thing that I think is comparable to this happened a hundred years ago, more than a hundred years ago. 
Um, so it's just, it's, it's honestly tough to fathom. And, you know, I, there's a chance that someone's hearing this podcast three months, six months, a year from now. It's worth stating that there's a, a lot that we still don't know about this because the testing sucks so much shit. Like there's a very good chance that the lethality rate is a lot lower than what the, I think, is being portrayed and what the worst case scenario is because we're not testing people. There's a significant percentage of the population that exhibit no symptoms. We just don't know how many people that is. Um, that doesn't change the fact that this is very scary. Like today is March 26th and New York city is on, I'm not laughing cause it's funny. I'm laughing because I don't know what else to do. It's such a tragedy, but New York city is on the verge of, of, probably reaching the worst crisis since 9-11 and potentially worse. New York has 40,000 confirmed cases and Italy has around 65,000, just to put it into perspective right now. And Italy, like everyone's talking about Italy as if it's, you know, a war zone. And New York is two thirds of that right now. Yeah. And yeah. New York is still early on in their, uh, on that curve. Mm -hmm. it, it's, about, yeah. it's about to get a lot worse. So yeah, this. I mean, any way you shake it, this is going to be scary and bad. But it is worth pointing out that there are things that we don't know. That there's a lot of unknowns, and a lot of the models and projections are based on assumptions. And some of the data can't be fully parsed out just because we've been so <laughs> terrible at testing. The part that confuses me, and like, I understand everything about you know you give up so much to do the trail. I understand it being hard to get back home. The part I can't understand is like. If people are like, oh, I've already hiked 400 miles, you know, I want to finish it. If it's that reason, there's so much that's closed even on trail right now. The shelters are closed, you know, public camping in Washington is closed. If you go to the other side of the coast, there's so much closed that it would be impossible the Smokies, to do. Shenandoah. Right. It would there's be impossible to do a quote unquote true through hike this year. So why not just, you know, take those miles and call it a good trip and then come back and either start from scratch the next year or pick up where you left off because it's not going to be a straight through no matter what right now. Also, you know? let's let's be frank. What makes the AT such an awesome trail is largely the social experience, is largely what surrounds the trail itself, and you are not getting that experience this year no matter yeah. what. You're not. The social experience is very different. Many hostels are closing. A lot of the resources around the trail are closed. Like, the... You, if you want to get the AT experience, Northbound 2020 is not the year to do it. Even like you miss out the hostels, you miss out on the, like the towns, fun things to do on zero days. Just everything that kind of goes into making the walking part not suck when it really starts to suck isn't there to make it not suck anymore. Correct. So yeah, it's a shitty year to hike. Yeah. So that's kind of sad and depressing, but I, I feel yeah. like I said my okay. piece. On a lighter note, assuming this all passes and when it does, um, what international long hikes are you planning or hope to hike in the future? Uh, Inga Trail, Everest Base Camp, Kilimanjaro, or like longer ones? Do you have any in mind? I was slightly distracted by a puppy there, but um, oh. yeah. <laughs> Originally, the 2020 hiking plan for a good old badger here was to do Tour de Mont Blanc in Italy. I think for obvious reasons, we have scrapped that idea. Yeah. Um, but I mean, that is still at the top of my list, not happening this year. Um, but everything that I've heard about that has definitely appealed to me. Uh, there is a certain percentage of the through hiking population that shits on Camino Santiago, I think, because it's considered you know, a beginner trail. Like, there's no backcountry essence to it. It's, it. It is, I think you need very little skill level, even if you want to call it that to do most versions of Camino Santiago. That being said, I love the cultural aspects of hikes. Like even just doing the first hundred miles of the Oregon coast trail last year where it's not remote whatsoever. I really enjoyed it because I got to see those Oregon coastal towns. I enjoy all aspects of backpacking. Um, anything else that, I mean, there's the, the list of things you, you could honestly pull out any piece of what, twinkle and grace were highlighting from their journey all of that made my mouth water um but yeah i guess it's just a matter of prioritization right now tour de mont blanc is definitely at the top of the list for me um i too would like to do the tour de mont blanc i think if i were to do like a longer trail the next one that i would want to do would probably be the te Aurora. um and then from twinkle's <laughs> episode when he's talking about 
The Via sorry, Alta is in Italy. Sorry for interrupting, but your dog is going ham on your hair, and now she you're... she bites it and pulls it. Like she <laughs> loves trying to tear my hair out of my head. Watch this. I'll show you. There you go. Free reign. What are you gonna do with it? <laughs> this is like her favorite thing, and I don't know how. How do you teach a dog not to do that? Oh, I, you know, I think you rub peanut butter in that. Her d- dogs ate peanut butter. She like gets it, like like she gets aggressive. <laughs> you know, like you're good at everything, but not this. In a month, John's gonna be bald. Ow, that one hurt. <laughs> bit my shoulder. She bites you in weird places. Like she bit my mouth. I don't know how you can even find something to bite there. She bit the top of my foot. Ow, that was my armpit. <laughs> You're so nice, but like sometimes I just don't understand. Uh, too cute to get mad at. Okay, we're good. We're good here. Uh, sorry, I, I I derailed what you were saying, I, but I couldn't help myself. Uh, it's trails. Uh, Terra would be good. Mont Blanc would be good. Um, doing any hiking near the Dolomites would be cool. A shorter trail in England might be nice. There's just so much to do. I would do any of them. You know, there's so many nice ones. Patagonia, like that whole place. I'll just go look at it. <laughs> Don't even need to walk. Just I mean, walk. I'd like to walk, but I, I'd be settle for just standing there and just being like, "Whoa." Yeah. So. Um. Okay. This is a good old fashioned. Would you rather only ramen for an entire long distance trail, or only mashed potatoes? Ramen. You can ramen them, but not with each other, and you must eat the chosen food every day. Ramen. Yeah. Now I get I get sick of mashed potatoes after one serving of mashed potatoes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I would I will say I think mashed potatoes is more filling, although the broth is pretty filling in it of itself. But um, I would say ramen's probably also more calorie dense too. I'm guessing. Um, but yeah, mashed potatoes get old incredibly quickly. Yeah. Um, I will tell a funny story. I was over at. A guy's house and he was cooking me dinner and he was like trying to think of a side to make he's like oh i can make one of these sides and he pulled out a chicken flavored pasta side and i just started cracking up and he's like why is that funny and i like explained that that's all that you eat on trail he's like oh that's okay i'll make something else instead i'll make mashed potatoes instead and he pulled out a mashed potato packet and i was like if you make that i'm gonna vomit um, yeah yeah not exactly I feel like when I'm eating dog food in the grocery store, I'm like, oh, I'm resupplying now. Like, yeah. it instantly switches. Well, that's but, the good thing about everyone with those resupply boxes is they don't have to go to the grocery stores. Yeah, I have a bunch of, like, food that I won from, like, giveaway that I was like, if, you know, we go on lockdown and I haven't gone to the grocery store in time, at least I can, like, rehydrate all these dehydrated meals. I'll be fine. Yeah, no, the preparing for the apocalypse and preparing for a backpacking trip are basically the same thing. Very similar. Other yeah. than uh, for a backpacking trip, you wouldn't get a gun. Trance and I are doing dueling yes. puppies right now. Well, she was eating the rug, so yeah. she gets the VIP seat now. <laughs> oh. At least, where's your dog? I, I, um, I don't have one, but I could probably get. Her name's, there's a Nelly that lives here. She's cute. Is that a gerbil? Oh, girl. Ah. <laughs> Um, and there's a little uh, chihuahua named Ronnie, mm. but she's upstairs somewhere. So, um, Okay, so this is kind of a twist on the earlier question of top three toilet papers in the wild. In case you ran out of TP during the quarantine, which through hiker hack would be more useful whenever you had to clean after pooping? This is considered a bidet-less house, so you can't say bidet. Wait, are we giving op- are we giving options? I think I'd misunderstood the question. So basically, if you run out of TP yeah. during the quarantine, what's your what are you going to use? Unfortunately, both of the cats died. Uh, Chance, you don't have any audio right now. Oh yeah. Sorry, uh, Harper must have bumped it with her head. Oh, dear, she... <laughs> uh, um, it looks like you had an answer for that. I was just saying, I bought seven boxes of tissues because they were the only ones that weren't sold out. So now I've got. Some super soft tissues should that happen. That is good. That almost seems like cheating, but I technically yeah. not. Uh, I, I guess if we're going that route, I'm going paper towel and napkins. But if if we're gonna get very creative, let's see. I have some. Uh, I'm looking at some old Trek stickers. Uh, I've got the dogs' wee pads. 
I've got, uh, you, you could always use a dish towel if it, as long as you rinse it out, throw it in the washing machine, right? Cut it in little squares. It could be like handkerchiefs yeah. that are usable. Um, I could just go outside where the dogs go. It's true. I, that wouldn't actually, that would solve where to go. It wouldn't solve how to wipe. Um, I've got a lot of paper. I've got like notepads and notebooks. I could start using pages. Oh, I've got all those books that people haven't bought. I'm going to just start tearing <laughs> pages out of those. Are you kidding? It's You're actually going to wipe my ass with the book I wrote. <laughs> I've been using Chance's book for toilet paper. Power move. <laughs> <laughs> I said that. I accidentally, well, I sent one um, to my buddy that helped with a certain section of it, and he had already ordered one at Amazon. And I was like, dude, just use it if the toilet paper runs out. Like, it's cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've actually recommended that to people. Since, wow. since becoming a homeowner, I realize how easy it is to just accumulate so much extra bullshit. Like our garage is already full of things that you buy and use once to twice. So even if it becomes like some abstract gardening tool, I have no qualms using it because, you know, there's a very good chance it'll not get enough use anyways. What gardening tool would you wipe your butt with? Would it be like a rake or like a trowel? Uh, yeah. Like, what the- are you that the, Scrape it. The, the little hand shovel, it, it wouldn't be the most comfortable experience, but I think just the sheer angles of it is actually built perfectly for a butthole. Why not just grab a spoon at that point? I, let's call Casey back and she can advise me <laughs> on the best form for doing such an action. What about like, do you have like spinach in your sink or in your fridge or like a lettuce like head that you could like, uh, like that's kind of like a big leaf, right? We have frozen yeah. spinach, which I guess is kind of, it's not too dissimilar from snow. I just, I fear if anyone would ever come back to my kitchen after I told them that story. I would probably just turn on the bathtub and stick my butt under it and wait for a bit. Like a make your own bidet. Yeah. The, yeah. Like a, the, the, the bidet was already uh, taken off the list. Well, I don't have a bidet, but I have a shower. It's an upside down bidet, basically. Um, Speaking of an upside down bidet, watching you pour wine is one of the more entertaining things I've ever seen. Earn your turns. It's coming out like Tabasco at that velocity. Yeah, that's very accurate. <laughs> so, case okay, so um, I need a wine opener. You you just move, so you have an excuse. I I got a 175 milliliter bottle of Svedka when they tried to close all liquor stores so that I wouldn't run out, and all I have to mix it with is Mio, and I think that's very hiker trash, and that's my backup for when I finish the wine. So uh, I, I think the thing that you just referred to is probably common knowledge amongst Coloradites, even Kansasites probably, former Coloradites. Um, yeah. But I think it's a funny oh. it's a funny enough story to share. Okay. Because so. I, Colorado's done a pretty good job overall with this whole COVID situation, I would say. Up until recently, it's been kind of a clusterfuck. <laughs> uh, the governor came out on Sunday and said that we are not going to be on a stay-at-home order and that businesses have to be at 50% capacity. And then on Monday, the mayor of Denver came out and said, mm, you know what, actually Denver is going to go on the stay-at-home order. Uh, and included in the stay at home order is we are closing liquor stores and weed shops (laughs) during that press conference, all of Colorado (laughs) left their homes and their workplaces immediately and went out to liquor. There's like lines wrapped around lines around the corners. I I will, I've been talking about the asthma and staying safe and not leaving my house. So it sounds a bit contradicting. I ordered it on GoPuff. I had it delivered. I had $50 worth of alcohol delivered to my house because I said I cannot stay inside with no friends without having any way to drink if I want to. Um, (laughs) Mom, I'm not an alcoholic, I promise. I just, like, you don't know how long we're going to be stuck here. Oh, this has turned me, this is just (laughs) poured gasoline out of my alcoholic tendencies. It's it's been a bad last 10 days. Uh, But the best part about this story is so that the liquor ban and the marijuana ban lasted a total of one hour before they came out and they're like, okay, okay, you guys can have alcohol and weed. Just go home. They, They realized the whole social distancing thing really backfired when they forced everyone to line up at their local liquor store immediately at, on, upon that announcement. They probably caused so many new cases in that one hour. Yeah, absolutely. Oh my god. Yeah, that's true. I didn't think about it that way. Oh, they um, called me from the GoPuff warehouse. They ran out of pink Moscato. I was like, you can just give me another white Zinfandel. Like, it's cool. It took them four hours to place my order because of how much alcohol people were ordering. I had a bottle, instead of the Sped guy, I had a bottle of Jack Daniels on my cart. And by the time I went from ordering a bottle of Jack Daniels and two bottles of wine to going to the checkout, 
the Jack Daniels sold out on GoPuff. <laughs> what like, is, is GoPuff a liquor store or a service that delivers? GoPuff is like Uber Eats, DoorDash, Seamless, Grubhub, any of those, but it's what you would find at a gas station plus sex toys. Interesting. So anything you'd find at a gas store plus sex toys. Do you, is, is there like a uh, buy a case of PBR, get a dildo for free special? No, but sometimes they have like case like deals on like two thirty racks. Like mm. they have, they have some good deals sometimes, but they they've recently added the sex department, which is very strange. But I did find it one time, and I was like, "Where am I?" <laughs> An accident, right? Oh, yeah. Interesting. This is the um, last of the wine. <laughs> Cheers. Somehow. I feel like this is keeping in that theme. Um, if you could drink, oh, I missed it. Sorry, uh, <laughs> I'll drink again. <laughs> if you could drink the bath water of one celebrity, who would it be? I feel like I would reframe this to if you had to, but yeah, I, I was gonna say there are plenty of people. <laughs> they on, probably got on this from our weird shit stuff. Yeah, we we probably I think we said on an episode that we could sell bath water. Sure. I cer- so we've done this to ourselves. I mean, yeah. certainly foot photos. Um, there, there are plenty of celebrities that are on my quote unquote list. I don't think I'm drinking any of their bath water. Like, yeah, but you have to. If I have to. Yeah, if you have to. All right. Well, I'm not. Surpri- yeah, you- I'm not surprising anyone here. I, I'm a fan of Jennifer Lawrence. Oh yeah, Jennifer Lawrence is your celeb crush. It's weird that you don't say Jennifer Aniston. But I, I already have the better version of Jennifer Anderson. Why would I go down from there? Good answer. Um, whose bath water would I drink? I don't really have any slub crushes at the moment. Not like a Bachelor just, contestant? No, they've all kind of worn Pete? off. What about Pete? No, Pete's a sissy. Fuck that guy. Um, can we circle back? There's yeah. not you can't you can't even think of that. one celebrity that you have a crush on. You must be in the hardcore honeymoon phase of your relationship. You right could now. just go like, who do you think would whose bathwater would be the least gross? Like, yeah, it's just like when I when I have to think really hard, my mind just goes black, and so I'm trying to come out of the blackout and remember people's names. Okay, okay, we'll we'll revisit. Um, who's if really you hot? Had to select an outdoor activity or sport other than hiking to invest your time, energy, and money into. What would it be and why? My, I foresee the future of my knees not being all that good. So I'm going to say something lame like golf. Uh, I need a, I need a sort sport that I feel like I can do until I'm 70 years old. And I don't That's love fair. mountain biking enough to say that. And all the other things that I can do with somewhat proficiency involve ruining my knees for the rest of the time. So I'm just going to go with golf. It's also pretty. I feel like you still get. Oh good yeah, I go, there's a lot of beautiful golf courses. Golf courses are also highly problematic in terms of their water consumption and just the overall perception. It doesn't change the fact that I enjoy golf, and that's just the matter of the fact. People in Colorado really like golf. People everywhere know, like golf. golf. I don't know if it was an everywhere thing, but I noticed coming here that everyone I know golfs, and I didn't notice that other times. I would agree with that. Interesting. And I'm new. Like, huh, so. you all golf. <laughs> um, Elliot or Bothlap told me to say Brad Pitt. That's your sport? Mm-hmm. I asked it. No, the bath water. Listen, if somebody else is giving you your answer, then it doesn't count. <laughs> I was like, it, what, I was like, what, what, what Bothlap is saying right is Brad Pitt would be his answer. So we got Bothlap's answer. You're still on the hook. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll circle back. Um, what would I choose as like a hobby if I had to change like to a different hobby? Sport specifically. Sport. I'm not a very good team sport person. They cut me from the golf team by laughing at me in high school. Um, I would like to be good at gymnastics. If like, is this like something that like I have to actually like try as myself, or like if I could be good at something? Well, they asked what outdoor activity slash sport. So the outdoor um, might okay, cool. Nix the gymnastics, but do I? Is it like what would I ideally be really great at or what would I take up? If you had to invest your time, energy, and money into it. Got it. Um, This is what dead air sounds like for those listening at home. (laughs) 
not editing I'm this like, out. Ice skating is cool. I'm, I'm actually shocked that I feel like the low hanging fruit is climbing. Oh yeah, rock climbing. I like doing that. Well, I already do that. Like I already have a harness and a rope. Like I've already got stuff. Yeah, but people are asking like if you were to subtract out backpacking from your life and just become like a YouTube sensation in a different sport. What no, I, I prefer to be mediocre at climbing. I don't really have any aspirations of getting good. Oh, okay. Because uh, I, I, I don't. I'm not like big on heights. Like the the only multi pitch I've done. Well, I've done more than one, but the multi pitches I've done have been terrifying and someone else has been leading it like i'd never want to be the leader on that stuff so i have no aspirations of getting to that point i just want to be the guy that like you want to have come you know like oh, i want to go we, but can not we cut out like, that sound clip elise yeah i, <laughs> I, I want to be the guy that you wait, say how did that go again <laughs> Sorry, I'm about it. all right good. I remember mental note. good time the rose is working time. This is just the, put that in no caption. This is my favorite part of Chance being uh, a buck under or probably like 95 pounds is like a glass of wine will do the trick. Yeah. You should see me standing straight. I've my winter weight is on. I it was nice out, so I went to go for a walk today with a dog and I put on a tank top and shorts because I was gonna put my app gear co hoodie on over it. And I looked in the mirror and like I almost cried. Actually, I, I have just enough alcohol in me to bring this up because I feel like this is going to be a controversial subject, but let's go there. I went on a hike today and I felt a little bit guilty because obviously we did that interview with Sandy uh, from the ATC yesterday and her overall philosophy was encouraging people to not hike. And I don't, ag- uh, and I just want to say that I don't agree with it. I, it. I think she was saying on the AT specific. No, 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 no. Because I had a, was, I had a question specific if she, if that was her philosophy of hiking overall. That was the last question. Oh, that, really? Yeah. She was saying that you know, with the day hikers, the through hikers would be like, "Why are they out here when I can't be?" No, and like people yeah. aren't saying within you know outside of six feet. No, that was. Because I went to I went to Sloan's Lake the other day to walk the dog, and there were so many people that I was like, "Everyone here is going to get it." Um, Certainly. but then me and Elliot went to bear Creek and we did a walk and there were not that many people. And like, it felt good. Cause it was like, we're far away from people. It is, it is an interesting gray area, right? Because like, if you do the, the reason that Denver issued the stay at home order was largely because of the way that people were behaving in parks. Like people were playing pickup basketball and volleyball mm-hmm. games and like, just, they were clearly not taking this seriously. And, uh, some of the outdoor behavior was a, a shining example of that. However, being told to not hike, especially like if you're able to find, I mean, I know when you're giving a guidance for an, a general population, you can't, you can't issue those kinds of nuances because people don't have yeah. that kind of. Well, they of- don't. Like I read the, I read the specifics of the stay at home order and they like under the exercise part, it specifically says, you know, hiking and doing that sort of thing is okay so long as you can keep those social distancing parameters. Right. So it, I think, but it depends on what definition you want to go with, right? So there's the avoid unnecessary travel. Is is driving to the nearest trailhead necessary? So I mean, there's so many different ways you could look at it. So Sandy yesterday definitely said she does. She's against hiking in any capacity right now. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I and I didn't I, I I yeah I I respect everything that she said and I I she's clearly very smart and a very reasonable person and I didn't feel like it was appropriate to challenge her on that at the time and you know maybe there's a variation region to region like you can make a very strong argument for staying out of city park in New York City right now like that I think mm-hmm. that that something like that makes perfect sense uh, however I went on a hike today it was the crowds there it was. I would say moderately busy, much more busy than it would be on a Thursday afternoon normally, um, but still certainly very feasible to keep a six foot distance from the nearest person at any, any given time. And most of the hike, I was very separated from people, but from an overall standpoint, in terms of maintaining some sanity right now, like if if you're being asked to stay at home all the time, your default action is going to be just to be reading about the situation nonstop because Oh my God, that's what I do. Uh, you know how I like numbers. And, I've been pushing that refresh button. Yeah, and what else can you do right now? Like it feels like the end of times in a lot of ways. And how can you go like, what else are you going to do? You can only watch. What is the show that everyone's into now? Blind Love. Tiger King. Tiger King's Tiger King in- is good. Tiger, Tiger King is it. fantastic. It's crazy. I, I wish I could forget it and rewatch it. I've I've heard so much about the show. I, I can't have you not watched Tiger King? I haven't seen a single minute of it. Oh yet. my god! <laughs> you get off this, literally, you're not going to sleep tonight. It's the best show. Uh, 
but so maintaining sanity is a big component of why I personally choose to maintain hiking in my life. But also one of the things I think we're not thinking about is our own health. And there's a lot of scientific evidence to support the fact that vitamin D plays a very crucial part, not only in your immune system, but especially in respiratory illness issues. I feel like that's something that's not being talked about enough. And I don't think supplementing with vitamin D is as good as getting it from sunshine, especially for this particular issue. Um, you gotta get perennium sunning in. That's right. I, I was hiking naked. I did get some weird looks. I just assumed because I was the virus, but maybe it was the butthole flashing. Uh, you just saw someone <laughs> flash the butthole. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I, I'm a little. I have a little bit too much cider in me to articulate what I want to say right now. But um, I, 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 I do. I do want. To, I, I don't want to come down as like a authoritarian on this. Because I, I don't I don't want to come off as a hypocrite. I, I'm day hiking and we've also featured people on the podcast who say to not do that. And I'm having trouble striking that balance. And I know that it's gonna vary region by region, trail by trail, etc. But uh, I just wanted to confront uh, potentially my own hypocrisy. Yeah. I feel like it's fair though that like she probably has to come at it from the sense of like she's a CEO of the ATC. So like it's she kind of has to say like you know if it's harder to have those nuanced discussions when you're putting out like a blast sure to, like if if we know. were if we were sitting over a glass of wine and it was just the two of us and she was off record maybe maybe her answer would be different and I, at yeah. least that's a very good point when you know that your words can influence thousands mm-hmm. tens of thousands or more people yeah. I, I think well, you I do think- have to take that hard line stance Also, like just how we had to give that little synopsis of what was going on with the liquor and the weed thing in Denver, like what's happening where she is might be completely different than what's happening where we are. You know, like we don't know what it looks like where she is or what the trails look like where she is. We're only comparing them to what we see with the trails where we are and what our impression of what local, you know, local hikes look like for us. For sure. And I think when we're in Colorado, we have so many options of trails to use that it's easier for people to disperse than it could be on the East coast where there's not as many options. But like for me personally, like there's a way where, you know, I, like I went on a hike on Sunday and there's a way where I look at it where it's like, okay, well, how do I keep myself safe while doing this? And I, you know, I go on all trails and when I look up the hikes in the areas that I want to be doing, I'm going on there and I'm seeing how trafficked they are. And all trails would say, you know, moderately trafficked, heavy trafficked, lightly trafficked. And I knew it would probably be more people than what it's saying on average, So when I'd go on there, I'd look at the ones that were lightly trafficked, and then I'd look at the comments, and I'd see how frequent the comments were. If there were a lot of comments in the past few days, there's probably going to be a lot of people. If it's lightly lightly trafficked and the last comment was a month ago, that was the trail I picked. And it wasn't the most scenic. It it ran along a highway. It wasn't like fantastic by any means, but it was from the research I had done a local trail that wouldn't put me too close to other people. And I think as long as you're doing your due diligence like that, then like, yeah, go outside. Yeah. Yeah. I also just from, and I don't want to give fodder to the people who are still through hiking, but just from like a principal standpoint, I don't like when someone's telling me what to do without a sound reason to do it. And I feel like when someone says don't go day hiking at all, because that's what we're doing right now. Like that's not enough. That's not a good enough reason for me. And I, I, to reiterate, I do think that the order to, to not be through hiking or even day hiking right now in the AT is probably the right call. Um, but I, I don't think someone suggesting that not hiking at all right now is a fair assessment. Right. But I, I also do think she's only got what she's seeing. And I think on the East coast, there's a lot bigger cities, a lot closer together with a lot less outdoor options, so all those cities going yeah. to the same small trails for day hikes probably yeah. looks a lot different than it does here. Certainly. I, I, to, oh, sorry. Go ahead. I, I just, I, I just want to clarify that I'm not even attacking Sandy per se on this. I, because I'm just saying this argument exists yeah. at large and there's a lot of in our culture right now, people trying to tell people how to behave. What is the right way to act as a human being? And I, I think this just kind of falls in line with that to some capacity. That being said, obviously, this is a very serious pandemic and something that we have to take seriously. But I think the risks of going on a day hike, even if it's moderately crowded, are far less than going to the grocery store. 
and which is oh, yeah, which is something that's essential so yeah. i you know when you're coming down on someone to stay in their house at all times and not hike i just i don't agree with that necessarily yeah and i think the thing is is like they've done studies that say when you tell someone you can't do something or you just like you know you just tell them this is what you can and can't do they're more likely to do the opposite of what you're saying definitely so i think like in any of these scenarios like you've got to be able to is the person instinctively is just going to want to do the opposite as like a fuck you yeah a quick break to bring you a word from appalachian gear company appalachian gear company is a name you need to know about their products are made with 100 alpaca fleece performance fiber which is similar to merino wool but better how you ask well let's start with the similarities alpaca is an ideal performance fabric it offers an unmatched combination of breathability, moisture management, and odor control, so you don't smell like a sewer in town or while grabbing a hitch. As for how it outshines Merino, Alpaca is softer, stronger, warmer, and retains less water. In fact, Alpaca only absorbs 11% of its weight in moisture, compared to Merino, which is 30%, nearly three times as much. Additionally, App Gear Co. has created a proprietary knit which makes their pieces extremely durable. Unlike Merino, which needs to be blended with other fabrics to boost its durability, these products are 100% alpaca fleece performance fiber. They've been tested by several pass-through hikers and have stood the test of time and trail torture. You may have noticed Chance and I have been rocking our App Gear Co. fleece hoodies in recent photos. Truth be told, I've been living in mine since receiving it, whether on the trail with my pup or staying toasty at my desk. These hoodies are incredibly comfortable, regulate temperature beautifully, and I don't smell like a porta potty despite never washing it. Literally, I have not washed it once since receiving it weeks ago. We love these hoodies. And this is the part you've been waiting for. We have a special discount just for you, the wonderful Backpacker Radio listener. Use coupon code Backpacker Radio, all one word, caps, at checkout at AppalachianGearCompany.com to score a 10% discount off your App Gear Co. goods. These products are already priced below most comparable Merino wool products, so with this discount, you're getting yours at an absolute steal. Definitely don't wait. This code is only good for a limited time. Again, that's AppalachianGearCompany.com. Get it. That kind of addresses one of the next questions was, can we go climb slash day hiking during this time? Okay, I saw the climbing question. And that one I wanted to, I was hoping you'd ask that because I'm on a few climbing pages on Facebook. And so like I see a few things like I see on the trail pages for us. And I think that the climbing community is having something similar to what the hiking community is having, where everyone going outdoors is using the same crags and they're doing the same climbs. And yeah. I was reading an article that was more scientific. And the problem they were finding is that, you know, just like you wipe down a shopping cart before you go around the grocery store to get, you know, whatever off of it. The problem they're finding is they don't know how long the corona can live on rock. There's no evidence of how long it lives while it's on rock. And there's no one going behind you and wiping off the holds as you go. So, you know, what you're holding halfway up the wall or on this bouldering route or whatever is the same thing that all these other people are touching. And they don't know how long the virus can live. Or bact virus, bacteria? Virus. 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 They don't know how long the virus can live on rock. And so that's what I've been observing in those groups is they're urging people not to go because there's not enough information and people are using a lot of the same routes. I mean, but it's the same thing where it's like, if you can find, if you know of a spot that, you know, not a lot of people go to, you know, like if it's, if you know, it's safe where it's not heavily trafficked, it's, you know, under the radar, then like, I think you should get outside and like, you know, see the sun. But if you're going to down to clear Creek for us, where it's like the most popular climbing spot in the summer or El Dorado or any of those big spots, you're touching the same holds as all these other people and it's no different because you're not washing your hand in between. So it just kind of is like a depending on the scenario type thing, just like hiking is. Yeah. I, think I, have, that makes sense. I have no thoughts on this. I, I'm deferring uh, to Chance on that's that. That's just what I've been a for. Yeah. I mean, that, that makes perfect sense to me. I, I went on a six mile hike and even 
even a hike that had two gates that you had to open, my hands touched nothing. Like I was open, able to open those gates with my feet. So I think hiking and climbing are different things. Again, I'm not in the climbing community whatsoever. So what you described makes perfect sense to me. Right. Because it's, I mean, it's bare hand on something that bare hand touch. There's only so many holds. You know, the way they they grade a root is based on where the holds are. So you're all touching the same stuff. Yeah. Bare handed and like wiping off sweat and touching it again. And so I think they're facing that issue of, hey, we want to be pursuing our hobby, but we the 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 why part that I was gathering is we don't know how long the virus can live on rock. And we know for a fact that no one's wiping off those holds with Clorox. 10 20 feet up so that's the that's what i've observed if someone wants to be a hero go climbing and start spraying the rocks with clorox <laughs> just like yeah the, well, a new product called clorox clorox patent oh shit the gingers are at it again there's a lot of questions about toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> like what? I need to drink uh, more. I know. I'm about to go get my second bottle. You guys are going to see some uh, screwdriver action. Ooh. Nice. Wow. This is going to be fun to observe, I feel. Um, side note on also that conversation that was just happening, and I have no like reputable source on this, but I've seen like like infographics going around about how long it lives on different surfaces. And like, certain stuff it's like five to seven days so and i think that was like aluminum or like plastic or something right so you know, I, like without knowing any of that it's i feel like it's safer to just and think about how many people can climb a popular route in seven yeah. days uh, if that was the lifespan at least yeah. brings up a good point i want to add the disclaimer i we talked about coronavirus a lot and probably are not done talking about it. Uh, <laughs> do, do me a favor and don't listen to anything that I'm saying. I am not an expert on this. I've, yeah. I've read a lot of stuff, but it, it's very easy to put bullshit online. So who knows the, the validity of the things that I'm reading that you should do your own research, especially from the most reputable sources, the CDC mm -hmm. world, world health organization. Um, I'm going to continue to talk about coronavirus, but just assume that everything that I'm saying is 100% wrong. I just think like in anything that we talk about, like it's, it's hard for us to know these types of facts, but just view it the same way you view the board game scenario. I said where, you know, you could see yourself going up to an empty rock wall with no people around and you're just climbing for you. You're just climbing by yourself and you're going back home. And that seems super responsible but what you don't think about is all the other people that could be connected to that. Um, just like that board game scenario. And that's the part where no one really knows the answer. You know, it's like, you don't know how many people this could be affecting. And that's the part that's the problem is that no yeah. one knows. Something helpful that I feel like I've seen a few times is just Where'd like, you guys go? you're contagious. Oh, we're still here. Did we? I can see you. I can see everyone. Yeah. Same. Did chance <clears throat> lose us? I'm going to blame it on the puppy. Harper ate your computer. Um, Can you hear us, Chance? Okay, Chance is having technical difficulties. I'll try, I'll try in the chat. Let's see if. Uh, for everyone listening out there that has no idea what's going on, I'm gonna. I'm not sure if you guys can hear me, but I've lost sound. We can hear you. Oh, we can hear you. I'm gonna. But. I'm going to text her. I, okay, cool. You guys can hear me. Why? Well, I'm going to yes. text Chance while narrating the situation here. We're having technical difficulties. This very likely will not be edited out. So mm -hmm. you get to just live through the shit show of what's happening right now. Yeah. It could be a lot worse. Um, well, Zach, if you want to answer this question. Sure. I'll start off and then Chance will, I'm sure, figure this out. Um, if you decided to self isolate or shelter in place in the woods, like imagining you had nowhere else to go, would you build a shelter or would you use a tent? Ooh. And if you had to live off your freeze dried supply, what freeze dried brand and recipes would you pick? Uh, it's a good question. I definitely would not make my own shelter because I trust the people that have been doing it for years and do this for a living to do a much better job than anything that I could do. Uh, so yeah, I would 100% use whatever tent that I have. And I have quite a few of them. 
thankful to my profession for that. Um, what freeze dried, like a specific product brand? I, I missed the last part. Um, yeah, they did ask like brand, but I feel like it's more fun to just be like, what, like, what's your go to meal? Like, Got it. What? So if this was, if I was assuming that I was trying to survive for three days, I would probably just go with double stuffed Oreos. Um, anything beyond that, I'm running a very serious risk of scurvy. So I'll have to find something with nutrition. Uh, I think I've talked about them on the podcast before, but I'm a big fan of the brand uh, Good to Go. They're based out of Maine. They do dehydrated meals. I, I think you can get them at REI. Yeah, you can get them at REI. Um, I will say they're not as palatable as the mountain houses, and that's for good reason. Like they, They're made with real ingredients like if you actually go through and read the ingredient list they are foods and if you open up a mountain house or backpacker pantry or really any of those big brands you couldn't say a lot of those ingredients if someone paid you to um so you know it's not as cheesy salty fatty it's not engineered by people who are just making it as addictive as possible but they are tasty and like i said most importantly they're made with real ingredients primarily vegetables a lot of them are vegetarian i think that are most all of them are gluten-free um and the the chef the one of the co-owners co-founders is a michelin star rated chef and like she's she's legit she's she makes delicious meals my my biggest knock against them is i think that they're a little bit low in sodium i'm a i'm also a salt fiend but especially in the context of backpacking where you're doing 12 hours of climbing mountains you're prone to sweat a lot. And in that process, you're losing a lot of sodium through your sweat. So at the end of the day, I am craving something salty. So when I have their meals in my food bag, I am almost always adding additional salt to their meals, but the food is very good. And I feel like I'm doing something good for my body in the process. Nice. Can you hear me? I can hear yeah. you now. Yeah, I'm back. Chelsea's I had to reopen the tab. I had like a second, I had that first old Google Meet open and then I just noticed I had two open and I figured maybe that would be causing the lags. So I closed it and then the sound just dissolved. Oh, We're Dude. back though. We're back. Um, so the question that I just asked Zach, um, if you were to like self isolate in the woods, would you build a shelter or would you use a tent? And then what would your favorite freeze dried food be that you would bring with you? Is there a rush? Like, can I use a tent while I build a shelter and then switch to the shelter? There's no, they didn't specify. So. Okay, cool. Well, if I'm not worried about like it raining anytime soon, like I'm going to build a shelter because who knows how long I've got to be isolated out there. So it would kind of be like a fun activity, you know, like um, stranger in the fun. woods type thing, you know? build something I'm and then that takes caveat. up my day I'm gonna throw in a caveat once you build your shelter your tent option is removed do you trust yourself? Oh, yeah that's good oh yeah do you trust yourself to build a waterproof thing assuming a hellacious storm is coming through you trust your ability to build a shelter that'll keep you dry and warm do i have a time limit to build the shelter in uh i mean normal seasonality right Let's, let's, yeah, but like if I'm spending two weeks with nothing to do but build this shelter, yeah, it's gonna be a fucking good shelter. Are you kidding? You think you can make it waterproof? I want to know your process. I'm just kidding. all right. So let's see. Um, I would make the frame out of some like branches, uh, cut all the little loose limbs off, make the roof, make the walls, put a little wind. No, I don't want a window. Just close me in. And wait, wait, wait. You gotta, 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 a lot of stuff here, like making a roof is a very elaborate process. So all of this is just like, I'm going to get like branches. Uh -huh. And how are you <laughs> making it? How are you making it waterproof is my curiosity. Next step, I'm going to get mud uh -huh. and I'm going to just put mud into every little, I'm going to basically cover the entire thing in mud and let it dry. Yeah. And then I'll probably get some like leaves or grass or pine needles and then put a layer of that on the mud. Like maybe like mud it to there. Like, if you were to like, I don't know, how do you put br bricks together? You know, whatever that stuff is that you use to put them together. Cement. Do that. Put some like grassy stuff there, moss, whatever. I, like just to like make some insulation. And then I'd probably go round two on the branches and stuff so that there's an outer shell as well. And then maybe just go ham with the mud again. I want I want someone who's got some sort of engineering background because what Chance is saying to me 
sounds like total bullshit, but for all I know, she's incredibly correct on it. I want well, someone other- who knows what they're saying, what knows what they're doing to weigh in. If if a storm comes through, is that thing keeping Trance dry? So like that's just like we're where I'm only in idea one of you know the brainstorming. <laughs> wait, wait, like, I, now that I've I, had five extra seconds, can I guess what the next idea, round is? More mud and more sticks. No, um, <laughs> you know how in the winter you can build an igloo. Yeah. So I would do that. But basically, I guess the equivalent is a cave. I would probably dig a cave and you're just, like, digging a cave it. now. You're you're like, yeah. carving out rock. Uh, no, like I would assume it's all dirt or I would like kind of make a little like igloo okay. out of rock and dirt. I don't know. But like, fuck, I have infinite amount of time to do nothing but this. Yeah. You know, like I'm going to put layers on layers until it's totally good. So and then it's going to be while so you're spending all that time building that shelter, I've built a boat. I, let's overlook the fact that it will. Where defi- is, what are you going to use a boat for? Because are we buy water. Have you ever seen Castaway? There's always a boat. We're landlocked. Not not in my scenario. I'm building a boat, and it sinks, and then I drown. So Why wouldn't you have... turn the boat upside down, and then there's your shelter? <laughs> uh, because obviously my boat is sinking, so it's not going to be an effective shelter. It's not an, even an effective boat. But like, think about, like, okay, like then you take those big, like long, like leafy things the big long grasses and you weave them together. You know how you can go over, under, over, under, over, under. Like braiding hair. Not quite, but yeah. Um, weaving oh. it to, at least knows what I'm talking about. Yeah, underwater like basket weaving. Yeah, underwater basket weaving. I do over water, long grass weaving, and that would create another element of layer. Um, you'll notice that when water hits grass, it goes down the grass, not through the grass. We're gonna do like, a backpacker radio project where I, you just, I'm putting you in the back country for. I'm gonna give you a week, and you have to build a shelter, and then I'm gonna come through with a hose. Okay, better yet, I think first off, we did that with campers at my camp. We would t- have shelter building as an activity, and at the end of the week, they'd have to sit in their shelters, and we dump buckets of water on them. So, <laughs> so you've got some background. Ask me in this. if I have experience. Thank you. <laughs> Um, Did you actually build the shelters, or were you just dumping the water? Dumping the water. Uh, well, you can't you can't help them because you can't tell them what to do. The whole point is that they have to use their creative powers. Were you given a playbook on what to do? Dump water. <laughs> In terms of <laughs> building an efficient shelter. Okay, yeah. I mean, it's New York, so you teach them about like lean tos and like you know How to all the conceal and carry. What are the long ones? There was the there's the lean twos, and then there was the teepees, and then there were the long houses, and you would teach them about all the different Native American tribes that used each. Um, that's like seventh grade classes, but yeah, we'd tell them about that stuff, and then tell them to try to make one, and then we'd dump water on them at the end of the week. They always got soaked. But what I think we should do is, I think that you and I should both have to go camping for a weekend. But like we're not at, like we have our tents, but the goal is not like let's go do a hike. It's we are it's Friday night to Sunday afternoon, each building a shelter, and then Elise comes and dumps a bucket of water on us. I'm down. You have and we just like water. we're just on opposite sides of a field. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of leave no trace that this goes against. Yeah. In my <laughs> idea of how my shelter would work, I'm thinking like a life or death scenario. So maybe this now that I'm talking it through won't work. Maybe but we go to the soccer field and like bring in and bring out our supplies. You get like Home Depot. We're not gonna have enough. Say, we'll go to Home Depot. We'll get a bunch of two by fours. <laughs> we'll get a hammer. We'll get a power pa- drill. An extension strip. <laughs> yeah. Power saw. Okay, so we're gonna build a house. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, moral of the story is Chance and I are both dying in this scenario. <laughs> so, no way, my shelter would be so good. <laughs> so much grass and mud. I'm crazy. I would put so much effort into this, it would be to the T. Yeah, well, I'd be comfortable in my cramped Big Agnes tent because I'm leaving it to the people who have done it. Yeah, well, I, I would like to have standing room. I have standing room in my scenario. Yeah, this, the standing room is everywhere on the other side of the shelter. This is just to keep you alive. Do you remember the pain cave we talked about? Courtney's pain cave? Oh, uh, that's Courtney's pain cave, yeah. That's what my, like that vision of like a cave like that, that's what I'm going to be in mm. while you're in your flimsy little tent trying I, to sit up straight. I think the closest you got to a, a good answer was just carving out a cave because that is a simple, that's a one-step process where you just 
chipping away. Have you at ever the... seen those those videos on Facebook? The time lapses of the guy who just uses nothing and builds like the entire like hut. Yeah, there's like a million steps, and that guy is like a fucking world class craftsman. Like, there's no way like, that we're re- sticks, replicating mud. That. Let the mud dry. Like, put it all okay. together. Like, what kind of mud? Because I feel like Midwestern mud, like where I'm from, that stuff just like flakes apart once it's dry. Mm, so point. my mud wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> so my mud is actually cement <laughs> and my sticks oh, are actually that. bricks. You want a little childhood story here? I used to have this little like Fisher Price desk that would just open. It was like blue sides, yellow desk part, and then the lid was white. And at one point, my parents moved it from the porch to the backyard And, like, I – my mom will have to correct me on this because in my idea, like, in my head, the way I remember it, this is 24-7. Like, the machines are going. It was probably just, like, after school for a few hours. But, like, in my head, like, I devoted a severe portion of my life to this. Um, I would come home from school and go straight to my desk in the backyard and I would start making mud pies. And, like, they had to have the perfect consistency. And, like, I would make them – perfect like you'd have to be able to flip them and they'd have to land without a crack and you'd have to flip them back and they'd still land without a crack like they peel off easy these mud pies were perfect and every night they would go into the desk because if i left them on the desk where i like my workstation was the bears would come eat them and this is in downstate new york where i have never seen a bear in my life but this was my mindset and so just in my head it was day after day like get home from school grind put the mud pies away like go to school the next day you get home grind put the mud pies away but like i was operating non-stop for ages just making these mud pies and making sure the bears didn't get them <laughs> who are the mud pies for just because you need to do a task i don't know like i don't know what my motivation was i just knew that if they stayed on top of the desk at night the bears would get them and like they couldn't have any cracks in them when you flip them <laughs> so if you want to know what i did before there were cell phones for kids um <laughs> making mud pies. But I was so good at it. The consistency was like I had the ratio perfect. There's so many poop jokes um, that I just don't want to touch like, right now. A great process. Thanks. You know? Like you had it thought out. Like there was reasoning behind what made a good mud pie. Yeah. And like they weren't thin either. Like it was like a fluffy pancake where it's like, okay, you've got like half an inch there. Really, really Round up, like, like a perfect circle, a perfect circle. Hot, wet mud pies. Pass. No, they cold, close to drying. Flip them before they're fully dry. That way you can not crack them. Let the <laughs> other side dry a bit. Flip again. Proper. It's a lot that goes into it. It's not an easy task. That mud okay? pie science is a. So I have faith in my mud skills, and I think that I could apply it into shelter building. Very great. If you want the backstory. I don't doubt that. I feel like that was important background information. Yeah, it's part um, of what goes into making a good shelter is, yeah, you know, being raised in the trade. So. <laughs> <laughs> and we've got another clip for the show, by the way. <laughs> um, might I add my first bottle of wine's gone? I'm going to go grab another. Being um, raised have- in the trade. <laughs> So, yikes. Um, Zach, I'm going to leave you with the question while she gets refill and I go pee. What yeah. was your most memorable road walk? Oh, I get a monologue here. Like that's interesting. My most memorable road walk. I'm going to talk about the road walk that didn't happen. By the way, I'm by myself. I'm literally talking no- to nobody right now. But mm-hmm. I think this is something that a lot of people who've hiked the AT and are looking at the PCT, they're not. Um, they, they've probably heard this debate or this conversation, this subject before, and they don't know what to think about it. Because on the AT, I was a purist. I, th- I thought if you yellow blazed at all, that meant you were not a through hiker. Um, again, I, I don't, I shouldn't say again. I don't think I've ever talked about this, but that's just my personal belief on what through hiking is. I'm not one of those Nazis that says the way that I think is the way that you need to think. Cause quite frankly, I don't care what you do on a trail. Um, but that was my philosophy for what I wanted a through hike to look like. So fast forward to my PCT hike and that I wanted to maintain a continuous footpath on the PCT. As you've 
heard us talk many times before 2017 was the year of ice and fire fire and ice and uh not only was the sierra under a ton of snow but more relevant for us southbounders is there were many many fires in the north specifically in oregon and northern california and when we encountered our first closure in the form of a fire uh we were presented with the only viable alternative was to do something like a 40 mile road walk for a 10 mile section. And this was a particular section, which the PCTA explicitly said, do not do this. This is not a safe part to walk. It's obviously you're adding 30 miles to do a 10 mile section. And it's going to be through a winding area where it's cars driving. I think the speed limit was in the 45 mile an hour range. Is this outside of Idlewild? This was the northernmost closure. This was in the uh, Jefferson Wilderness. Uh, okay. I'm caught up. <clears throat> um, and Viking and I debated for two days. And we had we both had the same sentiment, but it was just a matter of like, does this make sense? Are we stupid if we do this? We debated for two full days on ways that we could make the roadwalk happen and make it fun, make it safe. And ultimately, we just ended up throwing in a towel. We got some reports from northbounders that had bypassed the section that were conveying to us what the roadwalk would have looked like. And I think that kind of just sealed the fate. And once we got our ride uh, from one of Jabba's friends, once, once we were in the car driving, I got an instant tidal wave of relief seeing what we would have roadwalked. It was steep. There was no shoulder. The, the forest was budding right onto the road. There was the cars were moving very quickly, and quite frankly, it would have been the most dangerous part of the through hike with no scenic redemption whatsoever. Um, at the idea of chasing an ideal of continuous footsteps would have put us into what I consider to be unnecessary risk and with no satisfaction, no aesthetic payoff whatsoever and that that was the exact moment where my mind shift on what a through hike could mean on a trail that wasn't the at i always wonder how i would have done the pct had i done the at first for like those exact reasons because on the pct i was like oh a closure they're telling us not to hike it like cool and then i'd go around it and yeah. having done the at it's like okay i could see how given how not easy it is but like yeah, kind of like easy it is to stay on the same path the whole time versus like, you know, wildfires, avalanche, like all that kind of stuff, river crossings, like all the things you face in the PCT. I like if I had done the AT first, I probably would have gone into the Sierra, which I still think would have been a bad idea. But yeah. like it's so it's funny hearing like that stuff from you because it's like I I wasn't like that. But yeah. I probably would have been if I came with that mindset. We're all victims of our environment, right? Like the way yeah. that you're brought up informs the adult that you are today. So, of course, the first trail that you do is going to inform the way that you look at through hiking. Um, and it was at that exact moment where, like I said, my mind, sh my mindset shifted. It's like a through hike doesn't have to be continuous footsteps. And there's going to be more nuance in it than that. And even on the AT, it was three, four years ago where there were actually a ton of fires on the AT in like the Gatlinburg region um, where sections of the trail got closed down there. So they were confronted with the same situation that PCT hikers were confronted with. And if you're hiking through a section of trail that is closed because of fires, you are an asshole. Like you're putting other people's lives at risk because you're trying to be selfish and maintain this ambiguous idea of what a through hike is so um yeah yeah i feel like it was funny on it was funny on the at because there was parts where like like there would be like a loop to the shelter where like there'd be a side trail to the shelter and then side trail back to trail and you'd miss like point one of the trail right going to the shelter and then back to the trail and there were people in the morning that would go back down the point two you know the point two side trail to the trail walk the point one and then you know go from there and then there'd be the other people that would go the point two back to the trail where it picked up on the other side and then you know skip that point one that actually and that's is that something would you you would be one of the guys that would go back down the original point two wouldn't you no 
but that's it's funny that you bring that up because I was hiking uh, the Wonderland Trail with a couple of my buddies, and we got into a debate. And th- my two friends are not through hikers, but they had an idea of what through hiking meant to them. And we got into the debate of what a through hike, the definition of a through hike is. And there, and one of them's like, "All right, fuck it, let's stop talking about this. Let's just Google it." So he googles what is a through hike. And the first article that he clicks on was an article that I wrote for the track. <laughs> so I guess in a way I did get the final say on it, but I mean, it was just that point is like, even if you're a purist, like how, how, mon- how minutia are you going to get with these details? Do you have to go in and out the same blue blaze to a shelter? Because that's insane. What if you right. have to side skirt a log and you don't step a foot on the trail for those eight steps? Like, where yeah. where do you draw the line? There's going to be some level where you draw the line. And to say that your line is the correct line is so stupid, arbitrary, self-centered. It, it's, it's, it's not a debate that I like to get in because, for those exact reasons. Yeah. And then, like you asked, you asked the person, you're like, dude, why? Like, just go this way. Like, it, like, does that point one really matter? Like, you're walking point two extra each way to get to the shelter. So technically, you're at plus point three right now. Like, is it is it that worthwhile to you? So the the reason, like, yeah, man, I want to do the whole trail. And it's like, dude, like, I'm still doing the whole trail. It's point one on the way to a shelter. Right. And the reason that people get worked up about it is they feel like they did thing X and the other person did thing Y and they're calling it the same thing. So it takes away from the thing that they did. It's, it's honestly a perception of jealousy in terms of perception awareness. They, they want to be recognized for this thing that they did. That was better than the other person. They did the different thing. Yeah. And that's, like- that's such an egotistical response. Like who cares yeah. what anybody else yeah. did? If you're proud of the hike that you did and you feel like it was a through hike, and I know that's a very like new age uh, way to look at it, but that is the way to look at it. I don't care what anybody else did. I, if, if somebody else skipped 500 miles of the trail and they call it a through hike, I'm going to devote no energy to calling them out unless they're trying to profit off of it. I think there's some, caveats to that where you know they're trying to swindle people out of money that's a different scenario but if they just want recognition and they're lying about it i honestly i feel bad about that person because they're dealing with See, I'm some not issues e- i'm not even thinking about it that way like in my head it's like walking that point two to the shelter and then the point two back to the trail on the loop part that it does like it's still a continuous footpath sure. that's the part that i don't get it's I'm still on a continuous footpath, but just because I went like that instead of that, like I'm seeing a different tree. So let's, you know, let, that, that is a slippery slope argument though. So if somebody is doing, if especially on something like the PCT where you go through sections where there's tons of switchbacks or the alternate version is if you just walk the road, you could literally cut the distance and do a third. And you could say that you're doing a continuous footpath and you're getting from A to B you're going, you're, you're getting at the same starting point and the same ending point, but you're literally cutting out a thousand feet of climbing and three times as much distance in that particular section. You're just doing it because you're trying to make it easier for yourself. So I understand both sides of the argument, which is why I don't like to get in this debate because where do you draw that line? It's so arbitrary. It's not even a conversation worth having. Okay. So my, like the difference in the scenario specifically that I'm bringing up in that one is that to get to the shelter and back to the trail added on miles. It added on 0.3 total. Okay, let's say it subtracted so three it's feet. Not, let's say it subtracted three feet. Like, fuck it. It's three. Like, I don't give a shit what you do. You know, like, if you want to take off three feet because you don't have to go over a rock, like, cool, walk around the rock, you know? No, I'm, I'm just saying this scenario where you're going going to the shelter, the blue blaze to the shelter, and the blue blaze back out to the trail let's say that subtracts 20 feet. Like where do you draw the line? At some point, someone's going to have their definition it's, it's, of what it's my line to draw for myself. And that's it's your a, line to drive. That's, your, it's your line to draw for yourself. So if someone says, Hey, that's still a continuous footpath for me. Like, cool, dude, that's a continuous footpath for you. That's like, it's yeah, it is a continuous footpath. And I think that's the right thing you to know? do. And I, and I think the important distinction to highlight and what you're saying is continuous footpath does have a meaning. A through hike is a little bit more ambiguous. A continuous footpath means that you've connected steps the entire way. If, if, if and I know people 
who have put a stick down where their feet left off, gone into town and gone back and picked up that stick sure. and kept walking. And like, that to me is psychotic. Well, like I just like, that's like, that's to another level. Like you dude, you're walking a trail, enjoy it. Like if you need to go find your stick to be able to keep walking and feel good about yourself, like your priorities are probably out of whack. And there's plenty of scenarios where you, you're walking down to a road, you you pick up a hitch on one side of the road, you get dropped off on the other side of the road. So technically you haven't walked the length of the road. Some people will consider you skipping parts of trail by not doing that. Do you know that meme where it's the guy, I think it's from a show, but I haven't seen said show where it's like a cork board behind him and there's like a bunch of pictures and there's a bunch of webs connecting the pictures with strings. And it's this guy who's like, that That show that has the guy that wears that costume that like looks like a dog. Yeah. Like I know like that guy. And he's like standing in front of that map like this. Are you describing Charlie like, from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia? I have no idea. But do you know that map yeah, where it's like the it spread is. thing, guys like that in front of it, and it's a meme? <laughs> I love that yeah. Chance is describing the show in which we end every single episode of Backpacker I've never Radio. Seen it. <laughs> but anyway, that I'm is what I think about when the people go and they like put down a stick and they go back and pick it up. It's like, dude, like that is you. You're that guy in front of that map that's like you have like you need to take a nap. I can, you, you've lost the fun in it. Like you are so down that rabbit hole. Yeah, Just like have, we're having, like, you we're, don't, we're having a Facebook group debate right now, which I think we can, we can conclude. Hilarious. However, I, I'm interested, <laughs> I'm interested to get Elisa's take on this as a through yeah. She's got thoughts. Ooh, okay. So I started the PCT as a hardcore purist. Like I was like, I'm not going to miss a single Same. section. <laughs> like, but to that extent, I was also like, if there's a fire closure, like, that's I'm not going to walk through a fire closure. Um, and the year I hiked it, 2019, everything was open. So I, you know, it was a particularly, I mean, it was a good year. If you started in April, I started May 9th. Um, so I was good all the way up until in Oregon, I hit some hairy weather and like was borderline hypothermia. Um, so I missed about, and this was like, purely like I could have rehiked it, but I was already like the last of the Novos at that point. And I was going to lose my trail family. And I was like, okay, I either skip this like 50 miles to like catch up to where everyone else is, or I hike all the way, the rest of the way to Canada, probably alone. Um, so, I mean, I, I skipped miles. I skipped that section. And then I skipped um, about 150 in Washington. We were like what I call storm hopping at the end of my hike. Um, it started snowing in Washington in like September this year. So we got to points where we were like, okay, we've got three days of nice weather. We'll like hike in these three days, get to the next town, stay in town for three days for the next storm. Um, and we got up to Stevens Pass and it was like a foot of snow. And we were like, we're not prepared for winter. Um, and it was kind of one of those situations where like you pointed out earlier, you were like, you're not going to hike into a fire closure because you don't want people to come in after you. I feel like it's irresponsible. Like I think in, I wanted to keep going, but then I was thinking like, if I run into a situation where I need to be rescued, like I'm putting other people in danger. And that's kind of where I drew the line for myself. Um, and we ended up just skipping up to like 30 miles before the border. So hopefully at some point I'll fill that in. Um, so I'm like, I, I still struggle with like, do I call it a true through? Um, I still consider myself a through hiker, but like if someone was like, did you true through? I'd probably be like, no, I like the snow stopped me. Um, I don't know. It's like a weird thing, but also I wouldn't tell someone they're not a through hiker if they missed a hundred miles and like, I don't know. I, I kind of feel like it's not my place to like decide. I think it depends on your audience because like if someone asked me, did you like, did you through like the PCT? I say, I like whenever I refer to it, even when we are making our little sub caption for backpacker radio, I remember when we first made backpacker radio, it said with through hikers, Zach and Sean. And I messaged Zach and I was like, I think you should change that. Cause like, I think you should just make it say I hiked the PCT. Cause I missed a big portion yeah. of the Sierra. And so like when I refer to the PCT, I say I hiked it, but like for people at home that aren't so wrapped up in this world, yeah. I don't go ahead and say, hey, like, I miss this part. And, you know, I miss this part because of this. You know, like, I don't go into that because for them, like, they don't they, they don't, don't understand it in the way that we do. And they don't think about it as in depth as the way that we do. And when you start going into that nitty gritty with someone who doesn't 
do this the way that we do, like they think you're crazy. Yeah. You know, it's like, hey, did you drink it? Did you drink eight ounces of water today? Like, yeah, but like I went down a step and like a little bit splashed out. So like it wasn't a full eight ounces. And like yeah. I'm like, you know, I plan on going back and drinking that extra tablespoon, but like I haven't done it yet. Like that's probably how they view it is like, dude, yeah. like you drank a cup of water, like you're good. You and know? we're probably so it, hyper aware of that because of like the world that we're in. Right. Like I feel like when I'm talking to another through hiker, I feel like I have to tell them like, yeah, I hiked the PCT, but I did miss these miles. Like I do that. I'm like, yeah, but I missed part of the Sierra. Yeah. It's like, I don't want you to get pissed off that I'm chalking up what I did to you, did, you know, like whatever. Like it doesn't bother me. It might Same. bother you, but I'm like, I'm good. I, like, I came to terms with that at the trailhead that day. I was like, this sucks, but like, I'm not. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, it's, I'm not going to endanger myself and other people. But well, it's, like, it's worth adding the context of the winter of 2019 is that was a hellacious winter. And had you not made the decision to s- skip sections of the trail, you might not be here to tell that story. So you That's, very likely made the right decision for your livelihood, for your life. Yeah, and I do think I did. Like there were straight up like I there were a few people that we hadn't seen in a couple days and some of the hikers knew that they had like gone left the trailhead, whatever. And like, we basically ended up calling search and rescue. Cause we were like, we haven't heard from them. We haven't, we don't necessarily have reason to believe that they're hurt, but like, we haven't heard from them. This person has an in reach. What do we do? And they were basically like, well, knowing they have an in reach, we're not going to go after them. But they were like, but what's your plan? Cause they were like, we, you, we know you're hiking. Are you still going North? And we basically were like, no, we're going to skip like, 150 miles and then we're going to go north to the border from there and they were like okay good because um no promises that after tuesday anyone's coming after you yeah. basically the search and rescue guy was like after tuesday i'm not sending my guys out there because that's another storm was hitting right so and i, I mean i feel like that branch, that branches into the responsible thing to do if you're talking to search and rescue yeah. and they're telling you like hey we're not going to come get you don't go in there like yeah are you going to pursue a continuous footpath for your ego or are you going to listen to the people that are going to have to risk their lives to come get you out knowing everything that they know not being disconnected as far off as we have been yeah yeah i I just think overall the backpacking community needs to be nicer and more compassionate to each other by and large especially online on the trail this is not even something that people fight about on trail people it's the best community in the world yeah i would totally agree yeah if you're turned off by what you see online just delete your social media accounts and please just go out to the trail because what you experience out there is totally (laughs) different but you do see these arguments all the time people turning up their nose to like the way that someone else hiked their hike and it's such bullshit because the the year that you hiked was a very different thing than the year somebody else hiked. For instance, 2018 was a cake year on the PCT. I guarantee it had a very high completion rate because they had very average snow in the Sierra. They had a very moderate winter. Like it was the it was the tailor made PCT season. 2019 was very difficult. 2017 was very difficult. 2011 was very difficult. There were drought years in between there. Like every year is just such a different hand that's dealt so because you hike the trail in one year does not mean you know what the pct is by and large because every year is a very different story so moral of the story just be nice to people and shut the fuck up a little bit yeah and i would agree with you totally that like on trail is completely different from and that was actually a question that i was going to follow up with that someone asked was like are facebook groups like hikers in real life no god no absolutely not God, no. When I posted my video at the Northern Terminus on the PCT, I've said this on episodes before, but I haven't said it to you. When I posted my Northern Terminus, like getting to the end in Washington, I had just as many comments telling me that it was a failure. And like people going back and forth debate comments with each other, like, you know, just congratulate her. And other people being like, well, technically she set out to complete a hike and she didn't complete it. So it's a failure. And she failed at the goal she set for herself, you know? And like, there are debates going on in the comments, like just as many. And like for videos and videos after, even the summer after, there'd be someone that popped up me like, just remember you didn't finish the piece. And it's like, dude, like who gives, like, I don't lose sleep at night over this. Yeah. And it's the, I mean, just the things you see on the internet are not the things you see on trail. And the people that are saying that stuff on the internet probably have deeper issues of their own. Chance's case is a little bit different also because she's got a pretty big following. So uh, there are people that are going to troll you just because they want a response out of you. When someone shit talks to you in a Facebook comment group, that is... Not at that time I had it. No? I don't know. 
when I started the PCT, I had 600 followers on Instagram. Mm. Yeah. I didn't have a YouTube until I got to Idlewild because I couldn't upload the videos to the person that was editing them. Mm. So I just like messaged you and was like, should I just upload them myself? Well, then I, I guess I'll just say that as a disclaimer to anyone listening to this is just putting yourself <laughs> on know. the internet in general, especially once you start to develop a following, uh, people are going to shit talk you. And that's just a byproduct yeah. of reaching a certain number of people. It happens every year on the track. The more popular you are, the generally speaking, the more shit you're going to get. It's just a numbers game. It's 0.001% of people are people that are unhappy with their own lives and they project that out to other people. So the bigger the following you have, the more of those people you're going to see. I think there's I think a also too that like, for example, Chon's like people on your video, they might see themselves as like talking to other people commenting and not be conscious of the fact that like you are actually reading those comments. Like, right. Like, yeah. But I think also like, and I can understand it because you, you know, like I understand the people that say it was a failure not only because, yeah, I did set out for a goal. I didn't hit the goal by definition. Sure, it was a failure. Um, I mean, I personally think I gained a lot more than, you know, what I would chalk up to a failure. But I think that also in, in their defense, they've spent how many hours watching these videos that I've been posting in every town? You know, in their mind, they're hiking with me. They want to finish it just as much as I do. So when they're told, hey, we're not finishing, they get pissed off. It's like, hey, I invested X amount of hours of my life into this. And you're telling me like, it's like, you know, ending a show without the last episode. Like, I, you know, you understand people being pissed at that. So it's like, you can't, you got to take all of it with a grain of salt because you can't understand how much people put into it and you only have to focus on yourself. I guess I can see that from like when your favorite TV show doesn't have the ending you wanted. Like, I can right. see the perspective right, of you it. you get pissed. Yeah, but also at the same time, it's like you never told people people like hey this is what you're signing up for i promise you x x and x and like you're still a real person are you kidding all of my chances pct through hike episode one you know like video mm -hmm. two idle wild to whatever you know it's referring to it as a through hike the whole time it ends up not yeah. being one like sure it was false advertising it didn't happen that way but it's like dude like get over it like this isn't like a production you know it's just like yeah. that's what happened yeah i don't know i see both sides but like it's it's not the same as it is on trail to circle back. It's not the same. All right, so no. I'm going to put Elise on the spot here and say, pick our final question, the juiciest one that you've got. Final left. question. Oh man. Okay. Um, ooh, that was such a tangent. Do you want it to be fun or serious? I want you to pick. Let's lighten the mood. I feel like we've gotten pretty serious been a lot um, of serious questions can i ask two because yeah. i feel yeah. like one already there's an answer to it already um if you could name a pet or a child after a place on trail what would it be i think we already kind of know one zach what'd you name yours yeah sierra I, I got sierra just a few months after i finished the pct and I think one fun debate that happens on the PCT is Washington versus the Sierra in terms of like what the best section is. And I wonder, I, I would actually be really interested to see what the difference in responses between North Bounders and South Bounders. I feel like the last taste that you get in your mouth might influence what your answer is. I was very partial to the Sierra. It would honestly won my heart over. Uh, and that was what I named my dog. She is the apple of my eye. So this is Harper. Come here, Harper. This is Harper. <laughs> Harper needs to be on your lap Harper. at all times. That thing is She's not sleeping. a real dog. She's a stuffed animal. She's still sleeping. Harper was named after, well, not named after, but short for Harper's Ferry. So Harper for Harper's Ferry. But it was between Harper and Moose, which people just thought was for the animal moose. But while I was hiking up Mount Musalak, I remember looking at the sign and like we had nothing to talk about. We were trying to kill the climb. And I was like, moose would be a cool name for a dog because people would think it was after like a moose. But then you could say, oh, it's short for Musalak. So when I was going between Harper and Moose, I was going between Harper's Ferry and Musalak. But then I decided on Harper. Is it Musalak or Musalaki? I say Musalak. I don't know. I've heard it's kind of like the Moab. I, I, I've never heard someone like a fish still say it. I just said it the way I read it. I, I also called Hermione Ian the entire time until there were movies. 
we've we've had plenty of guests come on the show and just show me up on things that I was sure of, like uh, uh, Peter Bachwin. I always thought it was Mount Sanitas in Boulder, and that, I think he said it was Sanitas. So I'm I'm not sure of anything that I think, but um, I've heard Musilaki. The mountain in NorCal, is it Shasta or Shasta? Ooh. I've heard different I say, things. I say Shasta, but I think it's Shasta. I say Shasta, but I think the locals call it Shasta. I, I say Shasta, but I honestly have no degree of confidence I said in Shasta that. until I heard people say Shasta. And then I was like, I don't know what is real and what's not. Um, okay. This is the final question. This is more more fun. Um, do you think you could hike a major through hike while walking backwards the whole time? And if you did, what gear adjustments would you make if you had to? I'm going to go with something like I would the... certainly need... Go ahead, Jones. No, no, you. Me first. I, I would say something like the AT would be impossible. Just the amount of scrambling that is necessary in the, especially in the northern part uh i can't imagine my ability to climb backwards is good enough to navigate that at least not without killing myself first um if you do, like first would that be considered backwards if i do say that again like if you did feet first like instead of if i did like a no, handstand up those possible. parts uh i I don't, I'm not the most coordinated person in general, so I don't trust my ability. I don't even, I, I'm not even that good at walking forward. So I'm going to say my ability to do it backwards is probably not very good. Maybe Chance feels differently though. I would definitely need the weather windows extended um, because I'm not moving at any sort of pace that will meet weather windows. Um, was the question, do I think I could do it or how long would it take? I think it was like, would you do it? And if you, or if you had to, hold on, let me, let me revisit. Um, I, what, no, I would not do it. <laughs> what gear? If you had to do it, what gear? Or could you? Oh, what, and if you could, what gear adjustments would you make if you had to? I would add a helmet, elbow pads, knee pads, wrist pads, butt pads. Just like all pads. Full knight's armor. Pads. On I feel like pads, no, knight's armor. Right. I, uh, when like, you I'm said helmet, when you said helmet, I, my thought was I would get a helmet that had like a semi truck side view mirrors with all the different yeah. angles, so you could see everything that was happening oh, behind okay. you. Patent pending. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> for for those who love backwards hiking. Yeah, for the yeah, for the select few. Um, <laughs> I remember we also had a conversation once that was. I don't think we did backwards hiking, but I think it can apply to backwards hiking. Would you rather do a through hike backwards or do the whole thing in ski boots? Definitely ski boots. Yikes. I mean, yikes. Th those bouts sound terrible. If I have the option to not through hike, I would take it if, if those were my options. <laughs> have you ever gone from the car in the parking lot to the lift? Yeah, in but ski boots? just talking through the logistics of navigating, like, Mahusik arm backwards? Are you kidding me? I would, I would. You die. lose like half the half the motion of your leg. You can't bend your ankles. Yeah, but at least I could see what I was doing. Yeah, but I like, what about the parts where like you got to get your foot on like that little bit just right, and then that next little bit just right, and like you've got these big like bricks that you're just like, let me hit this thing with this and this. I would get so good. I would probably just go down to all fours at that point. I'd become a monkey, and I would become the strongest upper body male on the planet. Fact. Okay, so you're doing it in ski boots. I would probably attempt backwards, but it would probably be an unsuccessful attempt. I have total gear everywhere and mirrors. Yeah, you maybe I'd get there. a maybe I'd get a guide human, like a guide dog, but like a guide human to guide me mm. through the hard parts. You got to train Harper to. Now is the now is the time to start. When they're, when they're eight and a half weeks old, this is when they start picking up the rest of their life skills. That's a, that's scary. Oh, that's a good one. Will you take Harper on a through hike, you think, ever? Um, I think I would take her. Well, so I want to take her when I finish the Colorado Trail. I've got 75 miles left. I'd like to take her on that. The good thing about – um, she is a diva. Elliot just walked back in with her. He said she's a diva. She is. Um, the good thing about – from the tree. 
Australian Shepherds is they're good high altitude dogs. So like Spork, when I took him on the Colorado Trail, my ex's dog, he would get so tired and exhausted. And like I'd end up carrying him for miles and miles. But Australian Shepherds are notoriously good at high altitudes. So I think she would do good on the last 75 of the Colorado Trail. And I think that's going to be the first multi-day trip I take her on. I wonder if she is similar to Sierra in the fact that she does well in cold temperatures because that's a coat on that pup. Uh, Mm -hmm. But Sierra sucks in hot temperatures. She was laying in the creek the other day after I threw the tennis ball for a little bit. It was 55 degrees out, like legit laying down in the creek like it was a bed. Well, I've never had like a dog before, so like of my own. We never had a dog growing up. So I had her like she was laying on my lap the other day and I was like, going through her fur like oh this is the top coat and oh if you go down here like this is that smaller undercoat they talk about and I was like looking at all the little furs on her like this is insane um so I would assume she'd get really hot because she's got a lot of fur yeah but don't push her too fast too far I think from what I've read is like they need a nine to twelve months before they can it's the the training wheels are off in terms of like exercise yeah, but like I'm a sucker. If I see her struggling, I'm gonna carry her. There you go. You know, I'm gonna put her over my shoulders, just like I did with Spork. I can't help it. Yeah. Then she won't be too big, but well, I mean, she'll be half her size probably by then, or most of her size. But like, I can throw her over my shoulders. She'll weigh as much as you at that point. Plus, like I, do, I, I would probably take a week to do it if I did it with her. So it's like ten miles, seven miles a day. Ten miles a day. No. Not too bad for a dog that is a herding dog. I don't know. It's TBD. It's still, we could all be locked in because of Corona. That's true. You, know, you, you could all know. be dead by then. That's a good point. I was telling Zach, I heard a projection that it could be 18 months because it takes a full year to test a vaccine before you can give it to everyone. And like, you don't want to just kill the population with a vaccine and be like, well, we fucked up that one. Yeah. And then like three to four months to distribute. Me and Zach have already talked about it. This is the, the part side. of the show where you definitely should tune us out. But I know they're already, yeah. they're already testing vaccines. So if one of these early tests is any promise, hopefully it's just a year. Imagine though. That's yeah. just the thought. Imagine. There's also, there is yeah. is some promise to some of these malaria drugs in terms of a treatment and i guess there's some speculation that there might even be some preventative aspects to it vaccine like uh again tune this out because i am dumb Um, can you tell us your uh can you tell us the scenario you told me your strangest scenario you thought up for how this could go (laughs) yes and and you know what's crazy if i i've actually read this since not from anything reputable but like hypothesized uh i will say that i had this idea originally i'm not saying they stole from me but i this wasn't aided by somebody else, but I do think there could be a situation. This is a black mirror episode. <laughs> this is a, a scenario where they send out the tests that show that you have the antibodies for it. Right. So you've got at least some amount of immunity to it. We don't know how long that'll be and that you'll be issued, whether it's a card or a patch or something to display that you are immune to this virus that is causing the pandemic Therefore, you are safe. And if you don't have this card or this patch and you're seen out in public, you could potentially, there's ramifications that could be enforced, whether you get fined, arrested, executed. From a Black Mirror standpoint, I think execution's the most fun. Uh, I think from a realistic standpoint, probably just like a slap on the wrist. But I, I do foresee it. I mean, like, if you think about it pragmatically, once you've gotten this thing and there is the thought that you have at least short-term immunity and the economy is important, whether you you can't out, you can't weigh that more than people's lives, but the economy is very important. You can't tell these people who can actually contribute to the economy 100% safely that they need to be locked in their houses. So there's gotta be some way to verify that they can go out and contribute and be participating members of society when it benefits everybody else for them to be doing that. So that's that's my Black Mirror episode. Imagine going to a park and then being like, hey, where's your papers? Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, the, totally. the crazy thing is, like, that is Nazi Germany, right? Like, Yeah. Putting... That definitely brings up a conundrum of, right. like, wh- Zach's how also... Is Zach's it... also... Oh, no, sorry. I thought you were done. Oh, just how no, you keep going. is it to let people, like, if they are immune? Like, I think it's the same dilemma we're even seeing now with, like, 
there's debate about this, but like people who are like in their twenties, like who are like, well, I won't die. So, so I'm the, the difference that's the board game. That's the board game, people. And it's like, dude, don't do that because then I can't see the person I want to see. The difference in this argument is these people are actually very necessary to stopping the spread of the pandemic because once again, assuming they've got some sustainable amount of immunity, you need a you need a good percentage of the population to stop people from spreading it. That's how vaccines work. Not everyone in, in, in certain parts of this country, not enough people were getting vaccines and these diseases that we eradicated started popping back up because people were not vaccinating themselves. If you get enough people, a, enough percentage of the population who are immune to this pandemic, you want them out and about because once the virus gets to them, it stops. It's a dead end. They can't pass it to anybody. So Jonah had, he got sick two and a half weeks ago. He got sick and like missed a day or two of work. And he, like, didn't feel well at all, this and that, like, symptoms that could have been corona. And so I was like, don't go to work at all. He missed three days of work. And every day he was like, should I go in? I feel better. And I'm like, no, don't go in. Eventually they'll send everyone home. Don't go in. And so he wasn't going in. He called the doctor to get tested. He waited on the phone for an hour and a half. And they told him unless he traveled to one of those countries or was in contact with a confirmed case, they wouldn't test him. And so he was like, oh, I should just stop using sick days and go back to work. And, like, I had been making jokes where I was like, oh, only 11 days of quarantine left. And then, like, you can come over. And then, like, he'd be like, oh, when can I come hang out? And I'd be like, oh, you know, only eight days left. And then you can come hang out. And at one point he was like, wait, are you actually counting? And I was like, oh, 100%. Like, I am very much counting down from 14 right now. Yeah. Like, you are not coming into this house until 14 days have passed. Yeah. And, like, day five through one was, <laughs> it was like, can I not come over today? And it was like, no. Four days left. <laughs> I, I, there's a lot that we still have to figure out about this thing because I, Iceland, there's a, there's a study that revealed Iceland is, they've been testing their people, I think like the highest per capita of any country to date. Again, today's March 26th. And they've showed that half the people that have coronavirus, half <laughs> d- display no symptoms. So in America, you're not if you don't have any symptoms, unless you're an NBA athlete or a movie star, you're not getting tested. So think of right. uh, you're only getting a test if you've got the most severe of symptoms. So the confirmed cases are just a very small fraction of the number of people that are actually carrying coronavirus right now. That's that's my. So opinion. I saw I saw an article or not an article. I saw a Facebook post today from one of my friends in England because I've got a few buddies over there. And one of them was just the only caption was what the hell's going on in Germany. Yeah. And so obviously I was like, what the fuck? So I like clicked and read all the cat, like the comments. And it's like us say like what's going on in New York, you know, like they're so close to each other. And the conversation was they've had so many people confirmed and so few deaths. And we've had this many people confirmed and so many deaths. Like how, like what is going on over there? And all the comments were like testing man, like, Dude, they've they're just they're testing everyone and they're finding all these cases that we aren't getting to because we don't have enough to test everyone. Yeah, but to me that still doesn't explain why they have such a low lethality rate. Because from my understanding, there are some people that are gonna get it and even with hospital intervention, they're still gonna die. And the the rate because- at which people are dying in Germany is very low. And in a lot of the areas where people are dying in the United States, it, it's not even because we're exceeding the threshold of the hospitals. It's just because it's more than these people's immune systems can handle. I think it goes towards people with diabetes are at higher risk. People who are overweight are at higher risk. Like when you go into those things of let's compare us to Germany and instead of let's compare England to Germany, I mean, America's genuine, generally more obese. We have more issues like diabetes and things like that that make us more susceptible to having it be higher risk for us than it would necessarily be for them. Yeah, but I think this is, you're not wrong, but I think this is one of those things that we're still figuring out because this is just an anecdote. This isn't statistic, yeah. but there's a, uh, an Olympic caliber swimmer who had, I, I think he was a, either a gold medalist, he, he, was, he medaled. 31 years old, has no other comorbidities, no other underlying health issues. And he was, he had to go to the hospital. Like he was in terrible shape. 30, That's why it scared me. Yes. It, that goes to show that it could, ha- it literally could have very dangerous symptoms for anybody. Like, dude, I, if you got those lungs and you're going, like I'm fucked. Yeah. I might as well just start digging. Yeah. Um, the only exception, it seems like if you're under 20, you're fine. 
but uh, those not are the, there anymore. Yeah, the nineteen year olds in Miami, Florida, spring breaking it up. We're getting off. No, base. I think Let's I think our ratio is so high because people like you, we aren't testing because we don't have enough. And like, if we could test everyone that needed to get tested, if we tested Jonah, if we tested you, if we tested everyone we could, like the ratio would be a lot lower. But we can't yeah. test everyone. Yeah. yeah, and I would say that's a big thing between us and Germany is like they're. I feel like here they're testing anyone who comes to the hospital with like extreme symptoms, whereas like in Germany, if they're testing everyone, like their death rate is obviously going to be lower because For sure. they're casting a wider net. Yeah, our we, our denominator is just a giant question mark at this point. Yeah. Okay. I read. Okay, never we'll save more coronavirus conspiracies for the next <laughs> podcast. But uh, Elise, thank you so much for leading us here. Uh, yeah. Where do, if people want to keep up with you on the socials, I know you already posted it through the Backpacker Radio's Instagram yeah. is the easiest way to find it, but you should say it right now also. You can find me on the Backpacker Radio Instagram. Um, my Instagram, my personal Instagram is Elise Ott, E-L-I-S-E dot O-T-T. Um, short last name, very convenient. Um, and that's my main thing so Sweet. really the only relevant one well, thank you for oh, yeah. driving us through this you can follow at backpacker radio on instagram at backpacker pod on twitter facebook.com slash backpacker radio you can follow chance uh you can find me on instagram at juliana underscore chauncey on youtube at juliana chauncey and on facebook at chance hikes and you can buy my book hiking from home on amazon don't buy it from me because i'll get more money but i'll also have to go to the post office and i'm really trying to not do that right now <laughs> Uh, I did, I did just find a service like it's similar to stamps.com where you can at least print the postage from home. So all you have to do is drop it off and not stand in line. Uh, I need a printer then. Oh yeah. That part. They're like a hundred bucks. <laughs> they're like a hundred bucks. You sell six books and you're there. Uh, I know. I just, have to, I don't like ordering things. It's, this is besides the point. Okay. Uh, <laughs> thank you to, I'm going to read our, uh, Chuck Norris Award winners on Patreon. That's Andrew Austin McDaniel, Christopher Marshburn, Janelle Libertone, S11N, Sawyer Products, and Thomas Fulner. Thank you so much for. Oh, I'm at ZR Davis on Instagram and Twitter if you want to look at pictures of Sierra. Thank you so much for listening. Be safe. Happy hiking. Chance, give your sign off, and then Elise has to come up with one on the spot. I'm always last. Nope. I say we're, I okay. say bye. And then we're going to give it. Thing. And then we're going to give it to Elise. Um, stay safe, stay healthy, keep washing your hands, probably don't go outside. Uh, that's it for now. <laughs> I love it. All right, guys, thanks for listening. Bye. Bye. Look, if life pushes you down, you gotta push back. If you're dealt a bunch of lemons, you gotta take those lemons and stuff them down somebody's throat. <laughs>